did you know that people had a problem with Yolanda Adams putting him in the video, music video? What was the problem? Because people can't separate character from real life. Oh, okay. People were like, why is Kane from Power in this gospel music video? Oh, my goodness. And I was like, I was like, first of all, <laughs> first of all, Woody is a dancer. He he was there. He's danced with Chris Brown for years. Mm. That's how he got started in the industry. Was he was a dancer? Second of all, again, he's playing a character in a in a fictional series. Mm -hmm. So that's not Kane dancing in a gospel music video. That is Woody dancing and praising the Lord. As he <laughs> as he as he should. <laughs> the Bible says that every breath, that everything right. that has breath. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so therefore, if he wants to pray, he has breath in his body. If he wants to praise the Lord, he he can do that. <laughs> don't play with me. I don't get don't get me started on here. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> Life is like a basketball game. Sometimes you're up, other times you're down. Opponents and adversaries coming at you left and right. However, it's not the challenges you face that define you. What defines you is how you play the game. And I play to win. Welcome to my world, Carlton's World. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Carlton's World. Now, I'm really excited about this because my guest is actually... One of the co-hosts of one of my favorite podcasts that I listen to. <laughs> what are we talking about this time? Yeah. My special my special guest today is Jason, aka Smiley. What's going on, man? Hey, good to be here. Thank you for inviting me to this. It's yes. funny, I haven't been on my own podcast in about a month. So uh, you know, I've been you know around. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's funny? Because I just listened to uh the podcast that uh Josh and Brick did on Bel Air, and they mentioned yeah. that you have not been there. <laughs> I have not been there, and I even I didn't even finish watching Bel Air yet. I didn't even listen to that podcast yet, so I'm like, I'm like, I forgot that I was on that. So you're talking about something that they haven't watched, so I'm like, I'm ready. Let's talk about this. Yes, I'm yes. I was so excited because when you was like. I just finished watching. I said, "Yes, please, let's do this podcast." Because um, I had like I said, I had another homeboy that's uh, he's a power fanatic. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I have two homeboys that are power fanatics. I already had one on here, but I had another one, and I wanted him to come on. And he, we, our schedules just didn't align. But I was so grateful that you said you would do this because he was like, "Yes, I just finished watching the finale." I said, "Yes, let's do this." Literally yesterday, yeah. <laughs> I just watched the last <laughs> episode yesterday, so um. But yeah, but before we get into it, um, I want people to get to know you a little bit better. Um, again, as I introduced, you are uh, one of the co-hosts of what we talk about this time podcast, and I want to say, um, for people who are listening or watching, um, I again, I am a big fan of this podcast. Um, I actually I do voices for Jason's brother, Josh, who I did who I did mention. Josh is also the animator of the opening of Carlton's World, and that's right. He is the animator of Carlton's World, the animated series. So, shout out to Josh. Shout out to Josh. <laughs> did you did you know that he was doing? Did he talk to you? Did he, did he was doing animated yeah. series for me. You did yeah, that. Okay. Tell me, we talk about everything. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He was, he was just saying like. You're doing it right. That's what he was telling me. Like he's been with a lot of different people that wants animations, and he was like, "Carlton did it right. I need more people like Carlton that knows what they want, that has a big vision, that works on everything at once, and then releases it over time, so it's not pressured like week by week." So that's a really good way of creating content. So, ah, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, 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 I got. I, I've always wanted to do. Voices for animation. I've always wanted to do that, and then I, I, I that's why I so appreciate Josh so much, so much because he definitely gave me, he made a dream come true for me because I've always wanted mm -hmm. to do this. Um, and in working with Josh, I was like, I think it would be cool to turn some stuff that I've went through in real life, mm -hmm. like, but make it funny, like, like let's do like an anima animated version of things that have happened in my life. So I definitely, I definitely appreciate Josh, um, for for helping me make this happen. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I said all that to say, um, 
I'm a big fan of the podcast. Um, I literally, I was working with Josh, and y'all did a y'all did an episode um about Pastor Thorn, the first one. Oh yeah, that's right. And so, <laughs> and so I listened, and I was tagged in, it and I listened to it. I said these guys are pretty funny. Um, and so I literally, I literally was like on a two, I think a two week binge, and I listened to every <laughs> single podcast wow. even when it even when it was called marcus and josh or mark and josh right, whatever it was marcus called josh show, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i listened to actually listened to every single podcast i was like man this this because you guys i mean again y'all talk about entertainment so that and that's what i'm big yeah. into so y'all talk about shows right. and movies and everything um but tell a little bit tell the people a little bit more about you um and who you are and all that great stuff yeah yeah that's a um so um most people call me smiley except for like a handful of folks um i've been going by that for like 20 years and <laughs> so um but it's because when i love smiley faces it's kind of a is one of those things that kind of like helped identify me um in college and so but i am a writer um poet uh published self-published three poetry books and one bible study guide um and i have one audio book so those are which was one from the poetry book i do so my full-time i'm a full-time college minister like my role is a campus minister area director over the state of mississippi um i started a nonprofit in honor of my father called the andy abrams foundation um working on renovating the property uh i'm a dreamer visionary um I definitely do voice acting. Uh, so like my brother, he's I'm I'm his go to person uh, since I was 12. So we would we started off with a little camera and some action figures. And he was like, hey, help me do a voice. And that's been fun. So that's been something I've been doing for about 25 years. <laughs> so <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, and even as I couldn't talk to other people in the industry, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm doing a lot of what I do when I do voice acting is very similar to what, you know, I just never pursued it as a career but whenever i retire from doing full-time ministry i i might do pick up voice acting <laughs> so i love it and and he's and he's very good at it ladies and gentlemen i my i think my favorite voice from you and it's not an actual animation but it's more so of the parodies my favorite voice from you is the leonardo from the teenage oh, yeah. television <laughs> that's uh, series that's my favorite one i, I look forward to that every time <laughs> mm. it's fun i i do enjoy it um and so and i'm doing a i did a voice for your book um so yes yes uh that's really that, that was fun um yeah i was actually working with marcus last night um helping him with his finishing up his voices for that yes thing. and i and i just got that email so i appreciate <laughs> i appreciate the both of you uh for sure yeah um we're doing i'm doing i'm actually doing an audio for people who don't know i didn't i don't i didn't make an announcement about it yet but um we're doing an audio book for uh, Titan Warriors, uh, the alignment of power. So our the book one, we're actually making an audio book for it, and I'm getting all the voices together. So I'm gonna be editing soon and all that great stuff. So man, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of work, man. It, I'm yeah, all the different voices. Yes, and, you, and yourself, yourself publishing all that. So right. Yes, or correct. Have, okay, so that's gonna be. You're gonna have to get all that mixing, mastering, all that stuff, man. Yeah, fun. <laughs> I, I will. I, you know, I'm, but but I'm looking forward to it. I think because I know I know a lot of people are like Carl. I thought you retired. Um. So when I said <laughs> retired, I meant I'm retiring from filmmaking production. Mm -hmm. Um. I've been doing production work for 20 plus years. Wow. Um. And I just felt like I there was other stuff that I wanted to do creatively. I wanted to focus more on my writing. I wanted to do my poetry. Um. There's other thing, and I wanted to, and I wanted, I needed a balance in life as well, personally as well too, because my life has been constantly the grind, and it's mm -hmm. like, no, I want to enjoy life. Like I just, I just turned 39, and I'm at a point where I'm just like, I, last year I was like, nah, I really want to. I've given so much of myself to Victory Productions and the again the grind and everything. I need to give some time to me. And I thought that was very important and it's a fine balance in my life, you know, because yeah. I was I was I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a workaholic. So it's like I was like work, 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 work. And it was like, no, nah, brother, you got to you got to actually not just exist. You got to live. So, yeah, I, 
Man, I think that fits the show that we're talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's that's real. That's real, man. Yes. Um. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about Power, uh, Book Two, Ghost. Um. The series finale just went off, and there has been a lot of uh, mixed feelings about this finale. Um, okay. But before we get into that, we'll, we'll let's get in, let's just talk about the series as a whole. Did you watch? Well, first of all, let's talk about the parent series. Did you watch yeah. Power? Did you watch Power? Absolutely, absolutely. So okay, yeah, I, I got. I think I got into Power when it was still on air. Um, I think two or three seasons into it. So like, you know, ten years ago, everybody was talking about Power. Like, yes, it was like power power and i'm like what is power like i was so confused like you gotta see power i'm like what is power and so like one of my uh roommates at the time i think had like the C- the dvd uh season one or something like that and so i was like let me check this out and so i think it was like already on season two at the time so i just binged two seasons i was like oh my goodness i see why everybody's talking about this <laughs> so i got into it pretty quickly of course the first episode i'm like what <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah power power Do not watch this with around um uh, kids it's not for no kids. <laughs> no definitely Def- don't watch it around kids don't watch it at work yeah um, no don't watch it around your parents if no. they you know <laughs> they're not comfortable watching stuff with their children like just just watch it with yourself mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, I, power, like I said, power definitely is a, a is a show for the culture for sure. Yeah, whether you, whether you hate it or love it, it's definitely a definitive moment for our culture. Um, mm-hmm. power has been around for ten years. Yeah, and which is crazy. I didn't realize that until they did the whole ten year. Um, like they was doing like videos and stuff like that. I was like, dang, it has been ten years. That's crazy that yeah, this yeah. show started in twenty fourteen. Um, so time is definitely flu. Um, it, it don't feel like it though, but yeah, it's been 10 years. Um, power, power definitely. I love power. Um, in the beginning, um, I think the first two seasons, hands down, was the best. It's easy to binge, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think because I watched it as the show was going, like, I watched it each week, and this is before I discovered that you could watch it at midnight and people was spoiling it. So that's yeah, what... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I like I said, I enjoyed watching it week to week. Um, but I think for me, I think around about season four, was it season four? Is either three or four? It was kind of just like, all right, what are we doing? Where are we going? Um, was it that the love story? Like, because it's kind of the back and forth love between uh, you know, Angela and Ghost. I didn't really care about their relationship. And the way they made it, it was just like, she's not a good person. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <laughs> you know, that's like at the end of the day, like she is she is in love with this. And I I mean, I did enjoy Ghost as a character, but he definitely was not a good father. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was because I, I actually watched uh, just a quick recap of Kanan um, and uh, and um Tariq's relationship like I did like a little quick and I was like he actually was more of a mentor to Tariq than his own father Mm -hmm. look they had more scenes of him developing him and it was not a not necessarily a good mentorship like it was like he was (laughs) leading him to the path where he ends up in book two but like right 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 really interesting that his it's almost like breaking bad of Tariq you kind of see his development over time in that um with Canaan. Yeah. Um, I think I, I, I you know what? I'm not, I'm gonna be honest with you, Jason. I don't remember exactly what the breakdown of was for me when I was just like, uh, what y'all doing? I, I, I don't really remember. I know that, um, in the to- totality of it all, I know like I was always the oddball as far as like I know people love Tommy and I'll always be like, uh, uh, he, he uh, no, no, he, great actor. Yeah, great actor. Yeah. But the character used to get on my nerves. Um, Kanan, Kanan used, Kanan used to get on my nerves too. And nothing, nothing about nothing against Fifty, but it was just mm-hmm. the character Kanan. And honestly, with you, to be honest with you, 
that's why I wasn't too excited about book three, even though I like book three now, but I was like, because I wasn't like really, I don't really care about the Canaan character. I was like, why why are we following him? Why are we yeah. getting a why are we getting a prequel of him when they first announced it? But now, like I said, I it's, 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 it's it's picking up. So I was like, okay, I couldn't cool. get into I couldn't get into that. So I started the first couple episodes and it just, a book a book know, three. Yeah, just I couldn't. Okay, get into it. okay. So, so, so I only you... watched I only watched the parent series in in book two. I actually haven't seen Force oh. or uh, Kanan, um his origin. Uh, so. I'm gonna tell you this, and I know we're jumping around, but I'm gonna tell you this, bro. It's there's a reason why Force is getting is ending after season three. Because <laughs> For, Force Force just was it's just not it's not they good. They just yeah, they, they, yeah they, they forced it they forced it for sure. Um, no, I think I think too also, and again, this is not me. This is. Again, because I did mention, like I said, Tommy wasn't in this set of my favorite character, but I think because spinning him off into his own series, I I don't think the storyline, the storyline wasn't realistic for me with mm-hmm. Forrest. Like you got this white guy coming to going to Chicago, one of, one of the most dangerous cities mm-hmm. in our country, yeah. <laughs> and. Yeah. And you're going into Chicago, and you're coming in like you' about to be this big. You're gonna take over like this drug lord, like like you're not gonna have, like he doesn't have any issue. You know what I'm saying? Like he's coming mm-hmm. in as if he's already on the top, yeah. and again, you're going against the um, you're going against this black. You, you got a black. You got the black group. The uh, you know the the group the gang mm-hmm. got them, and you're like infiltrating them like like it's nothing just because you hung mm-hmm. around Ghost and Canaan. You still white, dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, so, and I mean, <laughs> New York, New York is not Chicago. So, like, no, you a different culture, different environment. You're not going to be able to just adapt that quickly. It's just, it's a city, but it's a whole nother city. Right. East Coast, Midwest, they ain't the same. Right. <laughs> so. and, it, and then you have another group. Um, another group. I can, I, are they, are, are they Greek? Are they Italian? I don't know, y'all. It's another, basically, it's another group. You know, like the another like gang group. Um, uh, they're they're white, obviously, mm-hmm. but and it's like he's mani- like he manip- manipulated his way like to beat Through them the and stuff like that, best them and stuff. Yeah. So I just, I just, to me, I just feel like the 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 realism of the situation, especially when it comes to the black gang, it is not there for me with Tommy. So. It makes for me. It makes sense why they're ending it after when season, whenever season three comes out, they're gonna end it after that. Um, and uh, also another question. I have a question for you since you did watch okay. the parent series. Um, mm-hmm. because my homeboy, my homeboy Quad, he was on the pod and he made a prediction because he he is he is dead set on the fact that James Ghost St. Patrick is not dead. He gonna come back. Who's we'll he? Ghost. It's <laughs> the fourth season. Uh huh. Every season was a new year of college. You take four years to finish college. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to go through the college and with the college after four years. After four years, you know, it's when you graduate and that's when you're supposed to get the money and stuff. But right. Head, so right. He's going to come back like, nigga, yeah, I made you finish school. Oh. <laughs> he, is, he is dead yeah. set on it. Yeah. So. What are your thoughts on it? Because it's the whole I mean, thing. It's the whole thing that, that people think that Ghost is still alive. So it's, it's Ghost still alive to you. You could you could make that argument, and I'm you know I'm okay with the argument. Um, and so, but I did <laughs> think that before, like when I think when it first ended, I was like, "Ain't no way in the world they just killed him like this and his own son." Like, mm-hmm. But seeing the the development of Tariq from beginning of power to the end of season season two i mean to the end of the last season of ghost it yeah it makes sense even if he didn't believe it or he believed it it makes sense that his, he killed his father like like this like actually works with his story and his mm-hmm. cold-bloodedness <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> um, so yeah i mean i think it would be it would be like one of those soap opera, which you, you know, which 
this show has some of that. Um, but it would it be a, like a soap opera of like bringing him back, you know, because you could always do that with anything. And it does fit his name, Ghost. Like, in fact, he's like not really dead, you know. So I think the argument. But I think for the show, it makes sense to keep him dead and like, you know, see the development of um, of Tariq. So. <laughs> See, okay, so see, that was my argument that I didn't want. Like I said, and I, and I watch, I say I watch soap operas, but only soap opera I was watching regularly was Young and the Restless. But, um, but I'm a soap opera head. But I feel like with Power, like, yeah, it's a street. I guess you could consider it a street soap or yeah. you know, street it's got I, the drama that you want. Yeah, in the soap yeah, opera. yeah. So I agree. You know, random but I. Things. But I feel like the world of actually soap opera itself is a little bit more. You have to suspend your belief a little bit more. I think I consider <laughs> it's not grounded. Yeah, right. With power, I, it's a little bit more to me. I feel like it gives more of a of a realism mm-hmm. that is there, and I feel like to me, making ghosts unalive. Well, he making him undead. I feel like that. That that just takes away the that takes away that episode when we saw that he died, got shot and died, mm-hmm. and it takes away the whole last half of season six. Mm-hmm. Like when they did that whole thing of each each character had their own right. episode or whatever. Right. It takes away. It takes away that, all of that. That that was some. Of, I mean, I know you you said you stopped watching or you didn't like as much, but that honestly was some of the best TV. Because you're like, who did it? You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so like for me, I'm just like because I didn't know. Like I was like, I was really on edge of my seat. Like who killed Ghost? Mm-hmm. And so like you kind of thought that each person had their that everybody had their reason, and it's like you're following them, and they all could have done. And that was like they all could have did it. Like it really made sense that any of those folks. And so I love those last episodes of of uh, Power. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to think. Did I? I'm trying. How, how did I feel? I, I think I because I, I, I mean because I, I, I get I watched all six seasons of Power. I was yeah. I was I religiously watched it. I was Whether definitely like it or not. You watched it. Well, the, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm that type of TV watch. Unless it's unless it's ridiculously, unless it gets to the point of ridiculousness where I just can't do it anymore. For the yeah. most part, I'm going to continue to watch it even if I complain about it. Um, but no, uh, but over, but overall, I will say. I enjoyed Power the series. I did over. Mm-hmm. I, I, I enjoyed it. Those last episodes, I think there were a couple of them. I was like, I felt like we could have done without, like uh, Angela's sister. Yeah. Like, and I get it. I understand. I understand why she would want. I understand why she would be a person that because of course she hated yeah. Jamie. Yeah. Um, but I think like some of those episodes, I feel like we didn't need to see it. the whole episode. Didn't need to be about that person. Yeah, I get. You it. know, so, um. But yeah, but overall, man, like I said, power is definitely a, a cultural classic. It's always it's going to be cemented in time. Um, did you think? Because when I was doing the podcast with my homeboy Maine, because they had they had they had uh, predicted not predicted, they had said there were there, there were some there there were some spinoffs coming. Right, we didn't know exactly who was getting spinoffs, and uh, we was trying to predict on our former podcast, Fire and Ice, who was predicting who was going to get the spinoff. Um, oh, did okay. you did you think it was gonna be Tariq that was gonna get no, I the spin off? I didn't. I didn't. I honestly thought, like when I when it first when I first heard about a spinoff, I did think that they might have brought him back, brought Ghost back alive, and I was like, oh, that's what they're gonna do. Because I wasn't like I was like I was you know I wanted to see more of him, even though he died, and I was like, man. But I didn't expect Tariq to have his own show. But I was like, how are they going to make this work? And I'm like, I can see how. And I'm glad they did because I actually, it was my favorite of the of the spinoffs. Um, and I, you know, and I'm like, do I like this better than Power? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so regardless, I don't know. But I mean, um, yeah, I didn't anticipate it, but I enjoy, I'm glad they did it because it was a, it, it, the the period of time location the setting just like him in college like it felt like a more than a coming of age like he's entering to a new season and i'm like i like where this is going and i kind of like that type of um following and it's like he's coming from 
being the son of the person that was at the top and being mentored by this, you know, crazy guy killing the dude that, you know, killed his sister. Like, you see, like, you know, he's got all this stuff killing his own father. So now it's like, okay, how is he going to be normal? Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah, so. So, um, I definitely didn't think it was going to be Tariq. I jokingly, <laughs> I jokingly had said La La was character. Um, I, <laughs> it was, yeah. I just, I just, I was just like La La, but you know, she ended up, her character ended up getting killed. Uh, but right. I was just, I was, I was sort of kind of being funny, but then I was sort of kind of being serious because it was like, you, they really set it up because you didn't know who was going to get this, who was going to get the spinoff. Yeah. You, like, you really had no idea. Um, so we have we're about to get into book two, guys. Um, so we have book two, Ghost, book three, Raising Cane. Cause they did uh, literally after they power went off, they did this whole thing. All these books yeah, that was coming out. Back. Yeah, yeah. It's a book two, Ghost, book three, Raising Canaan, book four, Force, and then there was supposed to be a book five with know that. Lorenz Tate's character. Oh yeah. Um, okay. but that didn't um. They decided not. They decided not to follow through with that, which actually disappointed me because, first of all, I think uh, Rashad Tate is one of my favorite characters on he Power. Is very, he is a very interesting character. Yes, from the first introduction of him to the last time we see him in this season, it's like man, like he is. Yeah, he's very interesting. Yes, <laughs> so. I, I love Rashad Tate. I just, I love, I love. He, he's one of, he's one of those people. He does the thing that we like to call uh what's it was it uh switch he switched codes. Oh yeah. Like he knows so, how to speak in the right space. Yes. And he's straight from the hood. So it's like yes. <laughs> it's like he will he will yeah, yeah, he'll um he'll old oh, dog old, old dog. Miss <laughs> <yeah. laughs> society on you, you know, yeah. he'll, go, he'll roll up on you on that. Cold switch. Cold, uh, cold switch, that's what it I was like, that's a switch code. That don't sound right. Cold switch. He cold switches very well. Um I was just pointing that because I, I love Rashad Tate and I love Lorenz Tate as an actor. I was I was really wanting to see, and also I felt like it would have been interesting to see what that would have looked like in a political space. Oh yeah, there's a what, lot you can say. Yes, what the what would of politics. yes, and especially <laughs> and especially I don't I mean I'm, I'm sure they wasn't looking that far into the future, but we're in an election year now. Mm-hmm. Do you know how like? how that show could have mirrored what we're looking at now. You know what we're going through now. So I maybe just that's felt why like... they squashed it. <laughs> maybe. 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 Somebody maybe. was like, man, you need to write that. Nope, we can't we can't publish that. That's that's too real. That's that stuff be happening. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, I just I just I, I I was a little disappointed that they decided not to move forward with that. Um but we did get Tate they ended up putting him on book two um ghost so also too they did a rollout there was like when the show when the original parent show ended they did this rollout of who was going to be in book two they was like they got you know got Tariq, tasha um what was the what was the uh the lawyer that was always on in on their grill oh yeah um sax sax mm-hmm. sax they're now sax and then they said also Beth the Man and Mary J. Blige. Cause I just I just remember seeing the graphics. I was like, I was like, what is happening? Like they about to do this. They about to they got Mary J. Blige and Beth the Man. Like this this is book two is gonna be something serious. Yeah. For sure. Um so we're getting into book two. Uh book two really starts because uh Tariq, so ghosts, uh basically leads to reap money but the only condition is he has to go to school he has to complete college so this is what puts him into the college arena um and another 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 uh side ca- another ca- what was the other caveat well i the- mean he couldn't he could so it's just his trust fund so right. i don't know if it's another thing but it's like he basically you know he didn't have any money, so he had to figure out how to how to uh make money. Pay, yeah. How to make money because because <clears throat> his mom is on trial. Right, right, right. 
<laughs> uh, for, uh, you know, so like there's that. So there's like, okay, I can't make money on my own. I can't use the money from my trust fund to pay for my mom's trial. So I have to figure out how to pay for that. So that was kind of Be- the because Method Man, he wants Method Man because Method Man is known to basically get, cr- you know, get criminals off. Yeah, and he's so a defense attorney. He, right. And so basically his character, Method Man's character was like, you got to pay me such and such amount. And Tariq got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. We also meet the Tejadas mm-hmm. because uh, Tariq is the tutor. That's of, the other caveat. So yeah. he has to actually tutor Zeke. One of the ta- yeah, Zeke. Because he's like yeah. playing basketball on, on, on um, Ready to Go Pro. Right. So he has to tutor Zeke. And Zeke is the, well, right now, Zeke is the cousin of... The Tahada, the Tahada siblings. You got uh Kane, uh Drew, and Diana. And then Monet, who's played by Mary J. Blige, she is basically the, the queen pin of this whole operation. So basically, of course, uh, this is power, it's about drugs. So they sell drugs. In this case, just in case people didn't know. Just in case you didn't know. <laughs> it's all about drugs. What was what what were your and, I, I, and this is a lot really I mean we're not gonna spend a whole time like really going through it scene by scene episode by yeah. episode but what were your thoughts? Cause this is another big thing with Ghost the series Ghost. What were your thoughts on Mary J. Blige playing Monet? Honestly, um, I didn't, uh, I didn't like her acting at first. I was just like, I like you as a rapper. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so it was like, I don't really know if I like your acting. I feel like she was trying too hard. Um, but I loved her. I love the character. And I just love the way she brought her presence to this, to the character. So like, you know, her style, like the character design, the, 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 the style, the, the, the literal power of her character I thought was good. She grew on me over time. So, I mean, I think originally I was just like, really? Hmm, I don't know if I'm believing you know, I felt believe it too much. And then over time, I just like, I got used to it. <laughs> so, that's, I don't know <laughs> so, so, I will say, um, I love Mary. I love Mary J. Blige. I think Mary J. Blige is a phenomenal singer. Um, she's definitely, again, an icon. Um, actress. Uh, I I just I felt like I I needed somebody. Monet is a powerful force, mm-hmm. right? I needed somebody who could really exemplify that. Yeah. Um, I think I know I know the first season. Mary, I'm not gonna lie. Mary J. Blige's her acting. I know people probably won't come for me. I'm sorry, but I just felt like the first season her acting was real rough. Like yeah. super rough, and but I felt like she's she tried her best to get better over time. Maybe that's why she grew on me because maybe it just improved. But yeah, like, I, I felt like I just got used to her versus I don't know how much more improvement. <laughs> right, right. I think that's what it is. I think you just you just got used to okay. Well, Mary's playing Monet. It's nothing we're gonna yeah, do about just, it. That's just, just how she sounds. That's right. She is. <laughs> right. So, um, she goes. She goes. Like her acting is like it's like emphasizes she uses her voice to project a lot which in on the screen is not as much necessary and mm-hmm. so like you know her body and her face expressions and her you know um body language is not as she doesn't know how to use that in comparison to because like when you think about power powerful people like you know even thinking about honestly Tariq, the way that he was able to as an actor, he was able to have a calm demeanor and like cutthroat at the same time, which is really interesting. I'm thinking like when someone's at the top, they can do that in a way that is blends well. And so mm. I feel like that type of character, um, Monet as a character being the the queen pin, like she wouldn't like, yeah, she would probably get upset, angry and everything. But like, even in those moments, she, she has that cunning, like that character would be more cunning, more, um, you know, collected, and so I think that with her acting, the ditch didn't come off like that. But like I said, got used to it. 
and I didn't mind her at by the fourth season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think, I think for me, it was by season three. I was just like, okay, you know, this is what it is. It is, it is what it is, <laughs> and we're just gonna keep it pushing. Um, but overall, I think the Monet character was a a great character. Um, yeah, absolutely. you know, I just, I just think, I just think some of the delivery could have mm, been could have could have been mm-hmm. better. You know. And you're a director, um, so you kind of see that too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. Um, so basically, so basically, like I said, the the whole goal right now with the Tejadas, there. And also, let's keep in mind that the husband, the father, um, Man, he so. he he's in he's in prison. Mm-hmm. Um, so the whole Monet's whole objective is we're gonna Zeke needs to be separate from. Whatever the to hide the drugs, so he don't want she don't want him to have nothing to do with it. Um, also we gotta keep in mind there is a there, so also on the in the series of course it's college so they have to go to class. Mm-hmm. So there's this one there's this class that they go to which I would have dropped the first day <laughs> because no I don't I don't do too well with the whole debate and and yeah, give you a, give you opinion yeah mm-hmm. give your opinion and. Uh, mm-hmm. just teach me what I need to know. I'm gonna take, take my notes, notes and, then, and then I'm gonna write my paper and or take my quiz, whatever I need to do. Because <laughs> I'll I'll drop that class, bro. I'm like, I'm not taking this, bro. I'm not doing this. Um, I don't know if I've had a class like that in college. Uh, but yeah, I thought I thought that was an interesting way of showing some of the like direction of the show and like mm-hmm. challenging some of the you know um it was kind of it was a level of meta of like this is what we're we're talking about this philosophical topic in the show like you're going to see some of the things that we're talking about in this class in the show so the writer right. is doing it showing that and so using the the dialogue and the conversation to show the tension to show and i mean honestly i, I think it really did show Tariq's um his the way that his mind um process information and thought through strategy and mm-hmm. so like you that's something that you know as you look back at the way that he navigated and there's another way like he know he knew how to code switch public you know went to the private schools you know lived in these so he knows though that language and so seeing how he is in the Ivy League and how he communicates and excels you're like okay why would he want to you know go into the drug business because he doesn't is that something he needs to do like he just go to college get his trust fund and he'd be good to go like what does he need but it's something about even that philosophical debate and the dialogue i think helped us see a picture of his mind and what he was thinking mm. of course the other classmates and things like that was processing and you know brain and they would always challenge like why would somebody do that and he would be a, a challenging thought it's like well this is not how things really are you know like and it was interesting so i thought it was interesting i probably wouldn't have, i probably would have been in, in, intrigued in the class i wouldn't have seen the purpose of the debate if it, it wasn't on the test but, <laughs> <laughs> i would have en- i would have enjoyed it I just think that it's one of those. Cla- I just think it's one of those classes. You know how the people are like they hey, yeah classes like you got to have participation points. Yeah, and it's yeah, like that's one of what it was. <laughs> and I just don't like being forced to talk. I feel like if I want to talk and give my opinion, I will. But I don't want to be forced to like, oh, let me see what I'm going to say today, so I can make sure I get my participation points. And oh, I feel really? like that's what that class. I feel like that's what that class was. Um, mm-hmm. What's up? What else I about to say? That's a good question you posed though. I don't know if you meant to post it or not, but okay. Why are you selling drugs? Yeah, like <laughs> why? Why? And I think honestly, this is honestly. But you know what's funny, Jason? It go. I don't know if you ever. I didn't see the video, but I know people was talking about it. Um, Ti and Lil Bootsy, Lil Bootsy was talking to their sons about why they had they was waving guns in them in the music video or something like hmm. that, and. They was basically telling them like you don't you never lived this life or basically you, why are you promoting this because this is not the life you lived. You're you know basically and, and that's true like these these children of these rappers because these rappers they actually were in the streets they were actually doing stuff other streets and now they're not but these kids are born of these rappers and they're literally living in the fruits of these rappers yeah. labor you know what I'm saying so they it's don't know. 
which is wealth. And then they don't know anything about the streets. <laughs> right, private school, all that stuff. So it goes back to with power with Tariq. It's the same thing. It's like you don't have to do what your dad and Tommy and Tasha were doing. Like you literally can just go to school, get your money, and be straight. And that's what and that's what Tasha wanted him to do too. She was just like, Don't worry about me. I'll take the rap. I'll deal with what I got to deal with. You go to school. That was pretty much what first season was about. Like, leave, leave, like, let me be, let me do this. And, you know, and it's like, don't worry about it. I'm, I got this. You right. need to be in school. And that's what his dad wanted, too. That's why he was like, hey, this is the caveat. I need you to go to school. But I do think that the the trauma of seeing his twin sister get murdered, mm. you know, <laughs> that was and like and the uh the absence t father you know even though his father was there his father was not connected to him right so they had an estranged relationship and so but he saw the way that his father was pretty selfish and manipulative and you know trying to gain more and more but that's that's also in his blood. So it's kind of like he got that same drive that his father had. And then I think that it just was a breaking bad process. So by the time he got to college and it's like, look, I learned some things, you know, because he learned from Canaan. Like he learned how to sell. He learned he was doing stuff at his little private school, making some money, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that like so he had some habits that he developed. It was like, hey, I can make some extra money to do this thing because I know how to, I understand. And I think that his his intellect was part of his, like, uh, his chess move of like, hey, I can have this. It's kind of like a Batman, um, Bruce Wayne uh, kind of two people where he can be, you know, this you know educated kid you know and he could people could look at him as you know this ivy league school kid but then he can have this alter ego which i think is kind of what ghost was trying to do mm -hmm. with this you know you know nightclub owner type thing and then drug dealer at night and so i think there's that um secret du identity duality and, yeah yeah so i think it was all about it was all about him wanting to have more power you know, I mean, that's the whole point of the series. And like what you said before, I think it was him becoming his own person. And that's a weird dynamic. Why would you do the same thing your father did if you want to become your own person? But it's like, I don't want to do what my father told me to do. He told me to go to school and not do drugs and dr deal drugs. I'm a deal drugs. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and, like I, 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 and also, too, people always say he'll either call him little ghost or you just like your father. He's like, no, yeah, I'm no, better no. than my father. I'm yeah. better. So basically, it's like he was trying to prove. Prove him to prove to himself and prove to his dead father that no, I'm going to be better than you and be smarter and mm -hmm. do do what you did, but do it better and, and smarter. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that was that whole thing too. Um, back to the class though, because this is like a little, it was like a, a B or C storyline. You had these two professors, um, oh, Jabari, yeah. <laughs> you had Jabari and Carrie. Mm -hmm. Um, they used to be the they used to be lovers apparently. Jabari was sleeping with the female students. Carrie, not students. I was, I guess, the student assistants. Uh, you know the, yeah, I guess yeah, the teachers aides. Teacher like aides. There you go. There you go. Um, and then Carrie was having was sleeping with Zeke. And she had a whole affair. Right. Like she was they were in a they were in a committed affair relationship. Right. So. <laughs> Just keep that also in mind too. Just so so this college things happening too, and of course we have the Tariq's, Tariq's um, his you know his class or his peers. Yeah, uh, yeah, Braden, uh, who went to choke with him, right? If I'm not right, and then mm -hmm. he meets Lauren, um, in class. In class, um, I already said Diana, so that's the Tahada. I already said her, um. So that's it for right now for season one. Um, as far as the main, yeah, cause, I, cause uh, Effie, no, Effie is on season one too. She was a recurring yeah. character, mm -hmm. so Effie was there too. Effie also went to show. Effie also, if you don't, rem if you don't remember, Effie, um, like like Jason mentioned that you know they was doing the whole drug thing back when he was in at Choke. Effie was the one that snitched on him, mm -hmm. and 
got Tariq uh, expelled. Yeah. So there's that. Um. So it's so, so basically it's it's the storyline is for season one is pretty much Tariq trying to get money to help his mom and then the Tejadas because and then because also because Tariq is working with the Tejadas as well. So we basically just have the the those dualities of the storyline. Yeah. Then you have some C and D plots going on here and there. Um. We basically end season one with Jabari finding out that, like, he put it together that Tariq killed Ghost. Ghost. And so, and did he find out he's a drug dealer? Because I think there was the, they were doing the course correct. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Drug thing, and it was like you know selling drugs in in class, like a stu- tutor uh, package online, right. and stuff like that. Um, and so then Tariq ends up killing Jabari. The professor. He does. And so then this is whole thing. We're going to season two. This is whole thing. They're trying to, they're trying to who killed Jabari, all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know, Tariq trying to cover it up. Did, did, and then um I think yeah, Tariq went to trial for it, right? He went to trial. What did he go to trial for? Was it because what? of the murder? Cause that's a good um I just know he went to trial and then he they they they, they lost. The the people that was going against him lost and Tariq was walk, yeah. walking out like he was the man. So yeah, because his because basically, and it might have been drug related because I think course correct because Jabari published or was working on a book right that described Tariq's basically what was happening because he was like he found out all the things and so um, I think that's where I feel like Lauren did some kind of um, conf- you know she was a, a mole at some point. Um, cause they had a couple cases on there, but eventually Braden basically said it was all his idea and they, mm-hmm. you know, and because of white privilege, he didn't have any problems. <laughs> Boom. And, and, and there it is. And there it is. Um, another, like another he's wealthy though. Like that's the thing. Like he's, right. he's, he's got like a huge, like, the West, powerful, the West is, the yeah. Westons are a wealthy family. Powerful. Brandon Brandon could have said he killed somebody, which he, by the way, did later on. Um, but Brandon said he could have killed somebody, and he would have still got off because, again, like you said, the white privilege of it all. So, um, <laughs> the other, yeah, I was said the other storyline too, because this is also consistent in power. You have this task force that is always trying to take down the St. Patrick. So this mm-hmm. task force, these police and these attorneys and stuff. They're trying to take down Tariq St. Patrick. Now, they, they, they really was like gung-ho. Like, we got to get Tariq St. Patrick. Mm-hmm. And it was like the same way they was trying to get Ghost. And mm-hmm. um, they just weren't smart. They, they just weren't did sm- not. They were. And I think that's where, like, with Sax as a character, he was so, because he was so adamant in, in power, um, original, about taking down uh, Ghost and you know, and Tasha and everything. Like, I think that he had so much, but he would, he was so, uh, he would manipulate the situation so much because he was just feel of, he just had so passionate about making sure it happened that it didn't matter. And so that right there messed him up. And so I right. think that's where you see that kind of continuing in on this, where he just was, he was not, he wasn't able to think well and logically as a good detective he was leading in with his emotions too much and so and that's the con that's the contrast we see with honestly with um Tariq like Tariq mm-hmm. was able to not lead in with his emotions like there's a couple of times where we see that but I think that what made him successful in the first couple of seasons was that he was able to to create a dichotomy because he really did like his only thing that he actually did care about was his mom and his sister mm-hmm. you know like as long as they were safe, he was okay. You know, like he could do whatever. And I think he felt invincible. And I think that's where it's like it didn't matter what else happened to him, as long as his mama and his little sister was safe. Yeah. And so Yeah. That's that was his motivation for everything that he was doing. It was like I want to make sure that my mom and my baby sister is taken care of. Um so we're in season two, another so the one of the major things that happened 
in season two was remember what I yeah, that's what I said that Zeke was the cousin of oh, the yeah. Tejadas. So the big thing that came out was that Zeke is not the cousin of the Tejadas. Zeke is actually the older brother of the Tejadas. Mm-hmm. Um, Monet was with Mecca, mm-hmm. um, you know, before Lorenzo, and so Mecca and Monet had a child, which was Zeke. They were like high school sweethearts or something like that. They were like together for a while, right? And so basically, you know, Zeke, you know, how, you know how some black families do when they have the baby, then they give they give the baby away to a family member, and the family member has to pretend that the child is theirs and all that good stuff. So basically, what yeah. So basically, Zeke would thought that Monet was his aunt, but kind of figure out that that was his mama, and Diana actually was the one who blew it up at the dinner table. How she find out? I forgot. Do you remember? I, for, I, for, I forgot too. But she I just, did blow it up. She was like, "And that's yo, that's my boy." Like, whatever she said, and I'm like, "What?" She's like, "Z, that's not your mom." See, he was like, "What's what's going on, auntie? That's not your." <laughs> he said something about that's, that's not your mom. auntie. That's yeah. your mom. And so, because basically, Zeke thought he was born at a. Basically, they told Zeke he was born on a date. Yeah, and it wasn't it was the like, it was. He was it, older than he really was. Right. He thought he was. Which right. Was like, wow. Right. <laughs> which I think was that part of the eligibility and a bunch of other stuff that was coming up with him. Yes. Like, you know, so that was a big thing. And so yes. he, he, you know, he was so in love with the teacher. That was his only, only space to, um, to vent. So he felt like, oh, like, I don't even know these people. So he went, so he's just trying to like, pour his heart out to carry and just then and disconnect and so monet definitely did not like that so nope. she murdered carrie and made it look like a suicide yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> also how did, that, how did zeke respond to that <laughs> go ahead no go ahead over no, you go ahead go ahead I'm finish. saying like he did not like that so yeah was, you know. but i was gonna say too also the um what the tahada children were doing was impacting zeke too because zeke got um, got injured. They mm. they then they beat they beat Zeke up or they yeah. beat yeah they beat his they hit hit his leg or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yep, that was part of because they and he didn't even realize like how much they were into like the business. Like, he wasn't even aware of all right. the stuff they were doing. Right. And so, because I think that was a point where uh, Drew was dating one of his. Uh, his basketball, basketball his teammates players. yeah yep. players and got him in the mess and that was all drama with that so a couple of side plot there but yeah um you know so so we didn't really talk about the tahada children and i but the reason i want to bring them up because again honestly to me jason to the tahadas to me were my favorite part of book two. Oh yeah i love Absolutely. the tahadas i love the yeah. tahada family i agree yeah um so again, we we talked about Monet Kane. Um, was, was shout out to Woody, man. Woody McLean is by he's he's doing his thing by far, and um, the way he's portrayed Kane, um, you can see because he's basically he's basically the the muscle of the of the children. Mm-hmm. He's the muscle of the family, um, but you he has this tough exterior. But the way Woody portrays him, you can see that he has this vulnerability. Yeah, that's good. That's good. He's definitely a great you know? actor. Like yeah. He is hands down a great actor. From Bobby Brown to, you know, <laughs> it's like he's a good actor. So, Sidebar, did you know that people had a problem with Yolanda Adams putting him in the video, music video? What was the problem? Because people can't separate character from real life. Oh, okay. People were like, why is Kane from Power in this gospel music video? Oh, my goodness. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, first of all, <laughs> first of all, Woody is a dancer. He, he was there. He's danced with Chris Brown for years. Mm. That's how he got started in the industry was he was a dancer. Second of all, again, he's playing a character in a in a fictional series. Mm-hmm. So that's not Kane dancing in a gospel music video. That is Woody dancing and praising the Lord as he <laughs> as he as he should. 
The Bible says that every breath, that everything right. that has breath, all right, all right. praise the Lord. <laughs> so therefore, if he wants to pray, he has breath in his body. If he wants to praise the Lord, he he can do that. <laughs> don't play with me. I don't get don't get me started on here. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> but no, seriously, that people people will, again, people you know people don't know how to distinguish, and I and even in the indie world. But mm-hmm. in, in definitely mainstream, people don't know how to distinguish character from reality. And it's like people were definitely was giving they, I, Yolanda was on a Breakfast Club. Yolanda Adams was on a Breakfast mm-hmm. Club. She was talking about it. So Okay. But yeah. But yeah, it's I mean it's t- it's a it's a nice song. It's a great song. It's a, a tight video too. Um but anyway. Um but yeah, so shout out to Woody, um McLean. Yes. Um and then we Kane have Kane as a kid. Yeah, Kane. Was great. Yes. Yeah, Kane, was, I love Kane. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then we have Drew, who's the middle brother, the middle sibling. Um, and was he was he out? Was he out or was no? That was he part wasn't, of okay. the show. Yeah, it developed that, so it's kind of okay. like because he's he was definitely the the middle child, the younger brother, the but but also they're all the family is in the business, so like everybody is pretty much a part of it except for Zeke and. But he's he's not Drew isn't the one in you know in you know the top and so Kane is more aggressive he's more uh, you know outspoken he's more um, that's what we see but there's like this this battle for the top type thing where it's like Drew has this I gotta be better because I am the better brother and I'm more wise I'm more I can think mm. about I can think more strategically and you know I'm not you know, a hothead because Kane is a hothead. Kane will kill you in a second. <laughs> right. Like, without right, thinking right. about it. And Drew has a little bit more, you know, he's way more calm in comparison to Kane. Um, but we see that evolution over time. And we so do. Drew's development, honestly, is probably the most interesting development. Um, because he goes from the little brother that's trying to that's trying to be on top to yeah, to a different type of person by season four i mean he's like he's gullet like he's i mean he's a murderer he absolutely is like he's oh yeah he's a stone cold cold-blooded killer like i feel like i'm more scared of drew than kane because oh, kane wow. is kind of predictable like you know what he's gonna do but drew is like i don't know man so because the I way think, he, like season four yeah yeah i think i did. think the turning point for drew was when first of all when uh, Monet basically manipulated him to kill his lover because mm. ba- he thought that his lover killed Poppy, the right. father. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, so uh, we didn't we didn't say anything. I'm sorry. So basically, y'all, the daddy ended up getting killed. Um, right. <laughs> Monet, Monet. So a couple things. Yeah, the daddy Lorenzo ended up. This is why it's a soap opera. Lorenzo ended up killing Zeke because he thought it was Mecca. Yes, he, he yes. Was on Mecca's plane because he was jealous of Mecca and Mecca and like, hey, they, this family is leaving me with Mecca. Mecca came back in town. Mecca's the relationship. Mecca's de- Zeke's dad. But he ends up killing Zeke from a distance. They found out it was Zeke. He kept that to himself. When when uh, Monet found out that Lorenzo killed Zeke, she's like, uh-uh. So she got him killed. And so by, the, by, 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 Drew, by Drew's lover, right? By and so, so there, and then that goes around, and now Drew has to kill this dude that killed his own dad, which actually Monet manipulated all that situation. Yes. So when they find out, and that was probably in about season three. By the time they find out that Monet was behind all of that, they were like, "Okay, she got to go." So. Yes, <laughs> it's it's a lot, y'all. Y'all 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 it's, pretty, y'all, it's a y'all, proper. y'all gotta watch. It's just pretty much it's gotta watch. Definitely, I loved it. I loved yeah. it. The drama, I I was here for it. <laughs> and then, and then Diana, she pretty much like she really just wanted to go to school. She wanted a different life, right? Um, but she just kept getting pulled into it. She was like, she kept having to do stuff. For the family, it's the big mm-hmm. thing was the big thing was family first. It's the family, yeah, family first. That was the big thing. And she was um, a daddy's girl, and he, she, you know, that was one of those things she cared, and so that was definitely a lot. 
and yeah. his mama's boy, even though there was like there was some tension, he still loved his mama not like all day. And that was evident in this last season. Last yeah. well, these last two episodes of the season. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um but yeah, so and then Diana, um, she and we're gonna bring it back around to Rick, obviously, but uh what what's what's which I do wanna say. Um I feel like towards the later episodes, like the like the latter season, well, there's only four. So like three season three, season four. I in some episodes, I feel like Tariq became the B character. Like he became the side mm-hmm. character in his own spinoff. Mm-hmm. I feel like the show be, be getting to start revolving more around the Tahadas, which was fine, actually fine for me because yeah. I found the Tahadas very compelling. And I'm going to get into my theory that I thought was going to happen, but that didn't happen when we get. To when we get there, um, but yeah, um, I just felt like Tariq Tariq became sort of a B character in some of the episodes later on. Um, but Diana and of course Tariq Tariq had a, Tariq had a had a definitely had a rotation going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so he had we mentioned with the women with the women <laughs> with the women. So, yeah. He had his own rotation. So we had Lauren, yep, and then Effie, Effie and Diana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was her, that was his main. That's his main mm-hmm. rotation. That's his mm-hmm. main women. And then, of course, when we get to season four, we got to add, um, oh, girl, Doma's daughter. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. she became part of rotation, too, at the um, end. <laughs> um, yeah, so Tariq had a little, had a little roster. Um, I feel like he didn't really, like, it really seemed like, honestly, and I said this earlier, but he didn't seem like he actually cared about any of these girls for real. Like, there was a little, like, not for the, like, he he there was a there was something that i think he liked about lauren that wanted that almost like this is going to help him stay grounded without mm-hmm. having to be like maybe i don't have to be in the drug world like lauren was like the good side of what he could be she's the she wants to be in school she's doing this stuff and so there was that tension but i don't think he really wanted like he wanted the power and control but i don't think he really wanted a real relationship because he wasn't completely honest with her you know Effie I felt like she was probably the best even though she was her own thing she was the best for him in a sense that she he was honest with her she was she was at Effie is she's an interesting character (laughs) because she can be loyal but she can also be very selfish at the same time which is really interesting so but elaborate like, elaborate on that. So like, I mean, not I wouldn't say selfish as much as she's loyal to a point where if it if it ends up cringing on her, she can turn to protect herself. You mm-hmm. know? And so I think that like her loyalty doesn't doesn't end with her sacrificing herself. That's what mm. I mean. Gotcha. And so I think that she, but she's she is loyal, but if you turn, she will protect herself. That's where it is. And so I think there's like and so I think that her and Tariq pushed her out. Like he could have, she would have been a ride or die for Tariq if he wasn't. He wasn't selfish. <laughs> you know mm. what I mean? So yeah, I think yeah. That, but she, because she was, she murdered Lauren to protect Tariq. You know, and so that was kind of his like the idea is like we gotta get rid of Lauren so that she won't mess mess up with Tariq's. You know, thing and all that stuff. So it wasn't even her own reason. It was like, hey, I'm protecting Tariq because she's a she's a she's a liability, and he don't even realize it. Yeah. And so, but that's that's part of that dynamic of Effie. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, speaking, yeah, speaking. So yeah, so basically, we're getting into season three. We thought Lauren was dead. She wasn't. She was actually in witness protection. <laughs> More um, so <soap> stuff. <laughs> yeah, she was in witness protection. <laughs> Um, she's going to be a witness to basically bring down, um, this whole thing, this whole drug organization. Once again, again, you got these ta- this task force who really just, they just, they're animate. They're like, mm-hmm. we're going to bring these, these quote unquote criminals down. We're going to bring them down. I'm saying quote unquote criminals. They are criminals, but still, um, they're murderers, but it's, but, but it's, <laughs> but you know what? No, the thing about this show, you find yourself rooting for the murderers because these <laughs> no because these task force people the be going so weren't. 
they be going so hard, and it's gonna yeah. be like, what do you? And they, but and they, they weren't good either. They weren't like, good. The they weren't good. Wasn't like they weren't. Good. I don't think there was any. No, there was probably one, like, cop that I was like rooting for, um, and that was um, the uh, Rashad Tate's brother, Kamal. Yeah, Kamal. Yeah, Tate. that was probably the only one that I was rooting for in this series. It was like, you know, he was probably the best cop on the show. Mm-hmm. As a cop. Yes. Um, and so. Yeah, but everybody else I sucks. Say. It sucks. <laughs> so yes, especially. Um, so I mean, are we gonna go? Like, where we at? Are we gonna go? Okay, so let's hold on. Are we? Are we? Are we okay, did I did I hit everything on season three? I'm trying to think about it. what really. Did, what was crazy? What was special about season three? Oh, we got. Oh, Noma came in on season three. Noma came in. That's <laughs> Mecca's wife, which. Right? Was it right? was the wife? I think it was a fiance. I thought they I thought they were gay, they're engaged. Well she's so so did was Mecca the father of the Anya? Yeah, is that no, 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 no. Oh, okay. So 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 Noma missed that. Yeah, Noma was with so Noma killed her husband. Okay, that's right. So but Anya doesn't know that. Anya thinks I forgot how she thinks he mm-hmm. died, but anyway, but but Noma was engaged to Mecca after she killed her own, right? Husband. Because so there was it really we met Noma because there was this couple. She had a ring on her finger, mm-hmm. and they said that, basically. And, and basically her, her, they, she sliced her hand off. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Noma just came in all ruthless, and I remember watching that. I was like. Oh, was that necessary? No, I was. I was just like, "What? What is going on?" I just I th- wanted to show how ruthless she was, and they showed it multiple times in the show. Which yes, I, so a, her ruthlessness broke by the last episode. Like she was not the same character that she was in season three. I, I agree. Because like, like what what I wanted from Monet is what I saw in Noma as an actress. So like mm. she brought. The queen pen, the ruthless, the manipulative world. Like she's like, I'm in control, I'm in power, and ain't nobody gonna phase me. I ain't got nothing. But she did have the one thing that she cared about was her daughter, and that was her level of vulnerability, which they made it so intense with her emotions that it just kind of like it made it kind of it it needed to move the plot. So I get why they did it like that. But it didn't fit her character to me as a as someone that was like in control and in power, um, and so I don't know yeah. if there's a better way of doing that. But it just kind of like went from I'm in control to like I don't know what to do. You yeah, know, right. By the end, <laughs> right, right. So. Um, an- another major thing that happened in season three, uh, like you said, Brayden got kicked out of school, so he's gone. But they yeah. end up working at the um the Western uh, the Western ho- Holdings or something like yeah, that. That's it. Mm-hmm. So Brayden and Tariq are working there. So basically they get in some kind of way they end up trying to they end up using they they imp- they implement the drugs, all the in stuff the going downtown, on. Yeah. You know, business all the, world. Right. Coffees and yes. putting drug behind in the bottom of the coffee cup. You know? Right. <laughs> so cause these rich cause these rich people are going to buy drugs. So they yeah. was like, we're gonna do all this stuff. Every basically everything gets exposed. The 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 Westons lose out on a lot of money. It's a lot of stuff happening in season it's three. A Ponzi that. scheme, you know, right? Ponzi, so, yep, all that all stuff. That stuff. Um, and Raiden kills his cousin or uncle. I think he kills his uncle, make it look like suicide. Okay, yeah. Oh, I thought he jumped. Did, he didn't jump out. No, the he window? pushed him. Oh, Raiden pushed him down. That's right. <laughs> and then That's he right. wrote, he made a wrote a note and said, "I killed myself" because it was a crazy stuff going on. So he made. A yeah, 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 yeah. Um, at the end of season three, and so now we're gonna finally get into season four. At the end of season three, basically, it's everybody versus Tariq and Brayden. Mm-hmm. That's basically how season three ends. It's like yeah, everybody right every, after him. Yeah, the the <laughs> the Tahada children. Oh, we okay. We gotta say this too. Sorry. Um. Uh, Monet gets shot. Yep. Um, because it's actually the top to Diana and Drew are actually plotting to kill Monet mm-hmm, and they kill Lorenzo, it's like, right? Mm, and they and, and they're enlisting Tariq's help, 
to do that. However, Monet gets shot, but it wasn't by Tariq. It was by Tasha. Mm-hmm. Tasha, uh, by the way, guys, Tasha's out of jail. Uh, we 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 didn't really talk about yeah. that, but she was getting... that was season one. She was yeah. getting this protection. She was good yeah. to go. She was doing whatever. So. Right. So she gets out, and then so she ends up shooting Monet. Um. Oh, there's also this other thing too with Tommy. Tommy basically was gonna try to kill uh, Tasha, but then they ended up having a kumbaya moment, and then that's the end that, of that. Do they show that in Force too? Because I'm like, I don't know if there's like a a. a... A connection between Force nah and- they didn't we didn't see tasha or Tariq in force okay um so they just pretty much he popped up and then that was that i think i if i could remember correctly i think in season 204 he did say he had to go off for a second and he, he why he, did he want to kill her because remember tasha said that tommy was the one that killed she oh, like tommy that's why killing she, ghosts so that's why she so she, when she did that it got her off mm-hmm. in witness protection. They're just looking mm-hmm. at Tommy. Okay, makes sense. Yes. And then, um, but but Tommy's supposed to be dead in New York because his car got caught on fire. Blew yeah. Blew up mm-hmm. or whatever. So, yeah, that's that. Okay, so we're done with that. So, yeah, so back, back to Ghost. Um, the series Ghost. Um, so, it's basically everybody. The Tejada kids, Noma. It's open season for Tariq and Brayden. So basically, episode yeah. one of season four, they on excuse me, they're on a run. It opens up with that. So they're trying to figure it out. They're trying to figure out how to get some money, get out of Dodge. Mm-hmm. Also, we meet Angela's nephew, which is Paz's Paz's son. So he's oh, man, he don't last that long. That's he does it. not. <laughs> like, and J- and Jason, I'm gonna be honest with you. I feel like, like that was that was, that was a waste. I feel like that was a waste of time. <laughs> Yep, it why was you, unnecessary. Like, why you introduce this specific character that connects us to the original one and then just kill him off within the first couple episodes? It didn't make any, it didn't make any sense. I was like, why oh, did y'all man. do that? That was the way. Been, he could have been a cop that we could have been rooting for. You know? Yes, yes. And so, but he wasn't because he died and was murdered by Tariq. I feel like, I, <laughs> honestly, and I and I get it because Michael Ely is a name. I get it, but I would have rather have seen. Angela's nephew versus Tariq and them, then Michael Eady's character. Well, to me, to I be mean, honest, they would have. I would have liked to see. I would have liked to see that character be the good thing that, like, that is the tension between Michael Ely's character. Because Michael Ely was not a good character. No, he was. He was a no. horrible, horrible person. I thought at first that he was going to be good, and then like. Oh, I was like, oh no, he is not good at all. Um, and so yeah. But they didn't they didn't go there. They just killed him off in the first episode. They did, and then they and they, <laughs> and, they, and, they and they made it they made it seem like it was a, a like Tariq was rescuing some they made it seem like it was a, a clean rapper, it was like so a, clean a, and quick, yeah. they didn't even deal with it. And you never hear his name for the rest of the season. Like it's like you don't. done. It's you like don't. what this dude murdered him on camera in the in the thing and he was like they made it sound like it was a rock, like it was he was saving somebody, something like yeah, a, something. Yeah. yeah. He covered up quick. Which I wanna mention. So like we barely mentioned his character, but he is very pivotal in the whole series. Go ahead. Oh yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Davis. Barely mentioned him. Davis. But Davis McLean um is like very pivotal in the whole series. Like he's on every episode, I think. And so he's like and he's my favorite character, honestly. I don't know if we can talk and about I, that. And yeah, we are. And, and, which is, <laughs> like I said, it, it, in the scope of trying to talk everything in a timely manner, um, it's it's sad that I did not mention Davis McLean because, like, like I said, Davis McLean is actually um, my favorite character on the series as well. Mm-hmm. I enjoy watching Method Man play this character. It really oh, yeah. actually saddened me how they didn't use utilize him on season four as much as I would have liked them to. Yeah. They could have um, done a lot more with him. His character, his character is definitely, uh, his character is like you said, he's pivotal in a lot of things, and a lot of the moves that are being made. Right, um, right. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like, especially towards the latter episodes of season four, I just felt like he was just there. Like it was just like yeah. you know. No, yeah, that makes sense. And I mean, you know, he was. 
his motivation that's something that i um i was trying to figure out because he he ends up you see his loyalty lies with Tariq. yeah it's, it's kind of like there's a development and growth over time and i think that he sees and it's because he's very um davis is very uh he uses people for his own gain Mm -hmm. like he is like that's that's his thing like he sees the big picture as a lawyer he sees a he sees the end result and he and he lines himself with what will get the best result for him at the end um and so i think that he sees that Tariq can be that for him. And that's probably why he's so loyal to him. Cause I'm like, at the beginning, you know, he's like, little kid, give me, I don't, ain't gonna do this, take this case, you know, until you give us money. And he gets the money and he's like, okay, you know? And so he ends up being loyal to him. Like, it's like, that's like, after that, he could trust him. Like, and that's the thing. Like he never turned on Tariq throughout the whole series. Um, there was a couple points where you thought it might've happened, but he was like that was the one person other than his mama that Tariq could trust. Um, yeah, and even with Brayden, like that was that was they were they were ride or die. But like he still didn't all the way. I feel like he trusted Davis even more than Brayden. I think also what the turning point for Davis was when his brother uh, committed suicide and Tariq was there with them and to witness that. Yeah, um, and killed I, sex. Yeah, yeah. So I think, um, honestly, Davis is like really looked at him like a brother. Like that's my little brother. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna protect him. Make sure that, that you makes know sense. that I you know that, I can see that. Yeah, because in the ways that he couldn't protect his actual his blood brother, mm-hmm. I think that's a it was a a, a transfer to yeah, Tariq. I see that. So very good. Very. I'm glad you brought him up. Um, cause like I said, yeah, definitely, definitely. I love, I love Method Man. I love the way he portrayed the he character. A great um, job. Great job. One thousand percent. Yeah. I, I, and I and I loved, despite how we feel about Barry's acting, I love seeing Mary and Method in the same scenes because it just, mm. it just, it just takes you back to, you all I need to to get by. Yeah. It just it takes you yeah. back. I just feel like I just feel like hearing mm. the song. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. Definitely. Um uh okay, so we're on season let me see, season four, da 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 there. So basically so Noma ends up not putting the end to the she's like, Okay, no, you're not gonna kill Tariq anymore. I forgot why, what the reason was. I can't remember. Um Well, there was you know, there was definitely like they found a, a truce. In the yeah. Where he knew some things about her and her daughter. And, you know, it was just like, all right, we'll just kind of play it. You know, we'll just keep things. As long as we don't kill each other, you know, we'll be good. And, and Noma says, you guys cannot, you and Brady cannot sell drugs. Y'all think you cannot sell drugs anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the truce. That's the truce. Oh, whatever. Um, then... Um, but of course, Tariq's like, no, we're gonna still sell these drugs because yeah, he wants to do it. Like he, does, <laughs> and that's the thing. Like there was a point where that was the point where he actually did not have to do it anymore. Right, his mama's off. Like he's not paying for a lawyer. He he's in school, but and they show they have an episode where they just live life as normal college students because there was a point where they're like, let's be college students, and they did that, and he was just like. I don't like this. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cause they struggling and, you know, trying to just regular college life, you know? And cause I mean, it's just like, and he's like, man, you know, cause I don't think he had a car at the time. They drive an old beat up car. He had, <laughs> he's just like, I can't live like this. I need to be on top. And that was what changed. And then we also forgot, we didn't mention, and this, but I felt like this is pointless. Two bit makes it, oh, makes yeah, appearances in and out. Yeah. Yes. And to see your point with the car, like, because Two Bit stole his car, mm-hmm. and so he ends up getting his car back from Two Bit, yeah. and then that's the last time we see Two Bit ever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, a, I was that like, was why, funny and unnecessary? But I was like, well, yeah, why does y'all bring him into this series? It is, it just yep. did, it didn't make any no. sense. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of pointless. Um, so yeah, so basically, so they have this, they start doing these underground parties. And um, so they're they're basically doing the drugs that way during through yeah. the underground parties. 
Um, Brayden, of course, starts. Brayden starts feeling the lead singer in the group. And starts getting on. And s- start getting on the drugs. So Brayden mm-hmm. starts doing drugs. You know, you're not supposed to get high on your own supply. But of course, mm-hmm. Brayden, mm-hmm. Brayden breaks the rules and he does. So we kind of see Brayden already was like, well, first of all, it get Brayden really started getting into his killer side because he just started killing people. <laughs> um <laughs> are wanting to kill people. Yeah. Um, but also too, you really saw how um how how he wasn't really ready for this life. Like he just was making dumb decisions and not really making you know, mm-hmm. and I also too, he was also trying to prove to Tariq how to, to Tariq how useful he actually is, but in a way he, he was really getting in the way. Mm-hmm. Um and he did. He got yeah. in the way and he messed up some stuff multiple times. And right. So, like I said before, he was a ride or die. And so like he's willing to do what it takes to 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 be, you know, to be the brother, you know, of Tariq. And I didn't mind their relationship. Um, I thought that was a good, you know, they had a brotherhood type thing. But um he was trying to prove himself. Right. And I think that's where he wasn't he wasn't confident within himself, which was, I think was a good approach. So like, I know that was, that was probably the intention. Cause you can kind of see his spiraling in this season of just like yes. making some really foolish mistakes. Very um, foolish mistakes. Oh gosh. Um, and then, uh, another big plot point, uh, Diana is pregnant mm-hmm. with Tariq's baby. Yep. Um, and they and did it one time. It was like <laughs> <laughs> that's all it take. I'm about to say only take one time. Only that's take all one it take. Time. That's all it take. Um, and uh, I mean, we this cat is not really important, really. But Tariq was like, "How we know when it's Salim's?" Because Salim is actually the person that Diana was oh, with. Yeah. Um, but, but of course, it, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Salim dies. <laughs> Yeah. Tariq ends him. Tariq is a is a murderer, by the way. Like He's, he really is. How many? Serious. How many? How many bodies? And I'm not talking yeah. about. I'm not talking about sexual bodies. How many? <laughs> he how got many? more of those bodies than he got the other. Like he's got right. more dead bodies than he. How many? How, about, how many dead count. bodies did Tariq have? Because Tariq Man. killed people in the original power, and then it's like he killed. He killed. The, yeah, people. He killed two people in original power. He Two? killed his dad. He killed the dude that killed his sister. Ray Ray. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and then so now he got and he, he got let, so like with Kanan though did he because he didn't kill Kanan but he was there and yes. let it happen. Let it happen. Yeah. <laughs> like because he was like yeah so it was interesting so yeah, yeah. he didn't kill him but he was he kind of was behind it. Right. Um. Yeah. Tariq got some bodies for sure. He kind of set him up. He kind of set Kanan up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, and so, uh, okay. So we mentioned Michael Ely's character. Michael Ely basically is this cop. He he has a dead wife. Um, and basically Michael Ely's like, yeah, I'm gonna get these people off the street, but I'm gonna also do street things. I'm gonna do bad things. And basically, he basically gets money. And he's a dirty cop. He's a dirty he's cop. Very and he ki- selfish. And he kills people. And and uh, Kamal, which is Rashad, Rashad Tate's brother, we mentioned him. Kamal ends up joining. Which is actually Lorenz Tate's actual brother, which is yes. really fun. I love that. Yes. That and <laughs> side, sidebar, because I'm a Moesha fan. I love Moesha. It's one of my favorite sitcoms ever. Uh, Lamar, oh, yeah. <laughs> Lamar Tate was on Moesha. He was mm-hmm. Hakeem's best friend on season yep. six. Mm-hmm. So I have, to, I have to throw that out there. Um but yeah, so Kamal is uh, working with Michael Ely. Basically, and Kamal has no idea that this task force, these cops are dirty. He has no idea. He literally is coming in at a pure heart, and he really wants to right basically bring just guy. bring justice and yeah. stop the bad guys. Um, but uh, basically, Kamal <laughs> unfortunately is too good, and um, Michael. Too trusting tells uh Michael Ely's his name is Carter. 
uh, Detective mm-hmm. Carter. Detective Carter tells Detective Carter what his what he what he thinks, and he ends up getting killed. Unfortunately, sadly, by Detective Carter. By Detective Carter, Michael Ely. Yes. So Michael Ely, he, and I was talking to Josh about this. He plays. He always plays either the other guy or a villain. Like he's never just a straight guy, you know. Like he's, <laughs> he's always like the other guy. Or the villain, and I kind of, I kind of like him as a villain. Like I really do. Um, I like him as a villain, and so I felt like this version of him was annoying, you know. And I feel like I didn't honestly know his motivation, even though they tried to show you with his mother. I mean, his uh, his wife, but it's like we didn't really know her. And mm-hmm. so they were trying to throw in that, like, it'd be different if it was someone that we knew from another place. They were like, oh, that's his wife? Right, like, right, right. Oh, man. You know, that would have been an interesting way of, like, weaving in the story. But I feel like it was just like a, here's a whole character and here's his backstory all at once in this last season. And it's like, you and, know. And, and, right, like, you, with you saying that, I didn't care. That's the thing. Right, I, like, I didn't care. Like they showed, like they had a whole scene of him just talking to his wife and like processing. I'm like I don't, this is not making. Th- I have no emotional tie to this at all. I don't know who right. this lady is. Right. I don't care anything about their relationship. She was already dead by the time we did. It. Apparently, she was, I think, killed by somebody in a, in a, thing. I don't know, but it's like it doesn't like whatever. And so his motivation wasn't even about avenging. It didn't feel like it was about avenging his wife, but it kind of was. But he was just corrupt. And it's like, what was his motivation of being corrupt? Like, it didn't even, there wasn't enough of that for me to see how corrupt he was. Like, that was really like, okay, I don't get it. But, you know, it just, they had to, because there was really nothing else redeeming about him. He was evil. Like, it was like, yeah, there was nothing that made you want to root for him at all. Right, like he didn't have a pet or nothing. Like it was just like evil. <laughs> <laughs> it's like evil. Like oh my goodness, maybe it was just because Michael Ely and his green eyes or something like that. Like root for him. No, like evil. <laughs> That's it. So <laughs> do, you, do you do you watch um, Reasonable Doubt? Yeah, yeah, I've seen the first season of that. Um, okay, he was when he was. Uh, I didn't finish. I'm in the middle of the se- second season, so I haven't finished it. Okay, well, I mean, he's not a season two, obviously, but um, right, he's in. Yeah. The <laughs> And he's a bad guy there. He, right. He's, he's, a, he's, he's definitely. But his motivation, his motivation in Reasonable Doubt made more sense, you know, because mm. he, he, he was trying. And I do feel like Jax was using him and very and she manipulated him for her own gain because she wanted, you know, and she was stringing him on along and he was trying to figure out his emotional tie. And that ended up where he just broke. She should have left him alone. I'm gonna bring you back. We're gonna we're gonna we gotta do it when we, when, <laughs> when when season two when we when we both finish season two of reasonable okay. doubt reasonable doubt right. then we'll we'll talk about that because all right that's cool. I, I want to talk about that too. All um, right, that's great because we're not gonna talk about it on my podcast because Josh and Marcus don't watch it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so so yeah, so uh, basically, uh, so. Carter wants to bring down Tariq because, of course, he te- he bring- and again, this is why I felt like Angela's nephew was. If you're not, if you weren't going to really do anything with that, they could have just left it where it was. Because basically, it's like I promise. She tells pa- Paz, "Is that that's her name, Paz?" That's um, the mom. That's her, the mom. His mom. Angela, yeah, Angela's sister. Yeah. Angela's sister. He tells Angela's sister, "I'm going to make sure that whoever did this pays for." It. And basically, he's a, you know because she has a. Right, that's the only connection. <laughs> right, that's it, and we don't see pause again at all. After Never this. again, <laughs> and it's like that is, and that's not that is not Detective Carter's motivation. Like, right, he says that, but that that is the only time. Like it didn't even that's, they could have left that whole part out. I agree, I one thousand percent agree. Um, the another kind of another thing that happens in this season, this like final season. Also, I want to say this: we have to throw this. We have to say this. So, they made the announcement that season four was going to be la- the last season after they filmed everything. Mm. Um, so they made the announcement that this last season, this like season four, this is going to be it. So, I can tell going into this 
that they were trying to wrap it up. They were trying to that, I, that, like they they were trying to wrap it up, but I feel like well, I don't know. I'm mean, I'm not on set. I'm not there. Um, not a writer or on the show. Um, mm-hmm. but um, I I'm not sure if they knew. You know, sometimes pe- people know be- before the announcement comes out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure if they knew beforehand when while they were filming. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is gonna be our final season, or if they filmed everything and then it was like okay then the announcement came this is gonna be our last season yeah um because i i can tell they were trying to wrap a lot of things up especially in the latter half of season this last yeah, season they, i like the way i mean they they gave us what four episodes or five it was five it was five each on each five yeah, on the so first half episodes. and then five on the second half so by the second half of episodes it definitely felt like they were like trying to wrap it up it was going real fast it was fast it was like a lot there's a lot of rapid fire I information. Was, by the third, or like it was like two more episodes. I was like, how are they going right. to <laughs> I was like, how are they gonna conclude this whole series in two more episodes? And that's what makes me think that I feel like they shot everything first and then mm-hmm. they found out afterwards like this is gonna be it. Um and then they possibly had to like call um the Tariq actor. And say, hey man, we gotta shoot something real quick so that way we can the last line of the wrap, show that right, wrap this all up. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so it'll make we'll sense. That. No, that right. Makes, that that explains it. And I think like the way to end it, the way the series ended could have and you can share your uh your negative thoughts. I know you mentioned, but like <laughs> it was definitely I do feel like you like what you're saying, they wrapped up so quickly that it could have been just the end of a season. Mm-hmm. And then, because there's so much other things that they could do. Um, because if they, I well, I don't know, like you have thoughts, but like I do think that if it was about him going through college, it would have been interesting to see him finish college. Come on, Jason, know? come on, <laughs> come on, then, like there's some kind of because even, even his motivation is like, okay, well, now he's done, he gets trust fund. But that actually makes him do. He could go even beyond what he was been has been doing. Now he has his degree to continue to be this man on top, which that, you can figure out. Right, and that's what I'm saying. That was the that's the reason why I want to break down this entire series because that was the whole point of how this series started. Mm-hmm. He went to college to get the access to his money because he couldn't get the money until he finished college and, and, a, and, 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 gra- and graduated. And graduated, so that was the whole point. And like you, like to your point, I think it would have been great to actually see him finish college. Not necessarily; he could still be do the drug thing if he want to do that. But of course, he's going to. That's what. That's, yeah, that's what he's uh, gonna do. That's the point. I mean, I don't think he would have changed his mind. Right, <laughs> but I think it would have been. I don't think it would have been good to actually see the end result of what the beginning. Of the series was, I thought that would have been because if you have see. four seasons, you can have fresh. You know, you can have each season be a year of his, you know, college career, right? And so, you know, it would have made sense to have the fourth season end with him finishing, and then, you know, but you know, they didn't do that. Um, what, what was I about to say? Uh, da, 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 da. so, so. We're about to wrap this up with season four, ending the season four up. Basically, um, Noma. Oh, that's what I had to, got to mention this too, because Kane basically is like, "I'm not working with you no more, more now. I'm working with Noma." Um, he want to be every everybody, every child basically wants to be their own independent person. Yeah, that's kind of what it, that's kind of yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. So, so Drew's like, "I'm gonna work with Davis." Um, um, not with uh, Carter. Carter, I meant Robert Carter. Um, Kane was like, I'm gonna be with Noma. Um, Diana was like, I'm gonna be pregnant and I'm gonna do this thing. <laughs> uh, Which, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. You're right. I'm gonna be pregnant with my with Tariq's baby. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a, a Saint a Patrick a Saint Patrick family. Tahada baby. Um, but that does not happen because. Again, wow. the, we got we got Carter and these crooked cops, and I, when I tell you, that was horrible. When that I tell probably, you, okay. that was horrible. When I tell you, Felicia became my least favorite character. That scene in that moment, that this, was unnecessary. Of this, of this whole entire 
Power series, franchise. The whole franchise. The whole Power franchise. She's my least. You know, guys. Uh, that makes J- sense. Jason and them like to do this thing where they even they talk about their favorite characters and least favorite characters on their podcast. I'm going to say it. Felicia, the, the cop, is the my least favorite character of the entire Power of franchise. The entire Power franchise. I do not disagree with you on that. And it's all because of what she did. Yes. She murdered. Well, a couple things she did. She, first of all, for some strange reason, she, Carter was like, go kill uh old dude. Uh, right. You know, for whatever reason. I'm like, okay. I don't even know why they want to do that. But, okay. They got to kill him. So, instead of her doing it, she says to Diana, you kill him. Which is like, why you want her to kill him? I don't understand. But she's like, you got to do it. So, Diana was like, I don't I don't know if I can do it. She, she could if she needed to. But she was just like, I'm pregnant. Tariq, I need your help. Take care of this. All right, I got you. So, who we murdering today? Because <laughs> he's a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to do is tell us who. And so he goes up, he kills him. And so, oh, girl, uh, the crooked, crooked cop lady, she's like, wait a minute. Like, she sees the video and she's like, wait a minute. That's not Diana killing. That's Tariq killing. Him. Oh, my goodness. I'm angry. So she goes, finds um, Diana. And beats the living snot, literally beats the baby dead yes. in her. Yes. And oh, that pissed oops. me off so bad. That pissed oops. me off so bad. That's all. Like, okay, I'm sorry, I killed your baby. And that was like the one saving grace for Diana. She was just like trying to figure out herself. She, you know, processing. She just accept. She was accepting the fact she was actually. They were actually trying to find a you know cordial relationship with Tariq like it was actually working in a way of like building up and then like boom and that was the breaking point for Diana like she's like okay you mentioned earlier she was trying to go to school and do everything after that mm-mm. she she like I'm ready to kill and that's <laughs> and, and, and at that moment that's what that's when things took a turn that's, and when, that's when things <laughs> took a turn <laughs> Absolutely. She murdered. She killed. She went to her house. So Diana went to old girl detective's house and killed her with a frying pan. Just just smashed the face. In. Ah. Just, boom. Like like the uh, shield off of uh, <laughs> oh, the uh, evil Captain Merrick. Like boom. You know. And um, yeah. And so that happened. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I- um, with with that, I forgot to mention too that um, Diana and them they was trying to Diana and them Monet and them was basically trying to uh steal drugs and all this other stuff. Oh yeah, that's another. And thing, so that's yeah. when Carter that so I had to mention that because Carter taught them and was like, "Now nah, y'all gonna work for me." So that's yeah. how all of this ties in together. And that's why Which Felicia. Is, yeah. That's why Felicia was telling Diana, "You gotta go kill old buddy." Right, right. So that's right. all that ties in, right? So yeah. then. And then Carter comes in because Tariq is there, Monet is there, Diana's there. And Drew told, which is, I understand Drew's motivation. It actually worked, but Drew was working with Carter. Carter, yeah. I did like his growth in this season because he was in jail for whatever reason, end up murdering somebody in jail, figure out a way to, you know, do all that stuff. He was like, and it wasn't like he was just like, I'm trying to be on top. I'm trying to. Like I'm, I ain't got time to be associated with anybody else, and so he's working with Carter so he can do what he can do. Right, Carter. The reason why uh, Drew was in jail because Carter needed somebody killed in jail, so they yeah. was like, "We're gonna arrest." Put him in there. So they, so they, so so they put it. Drew in there to basically do what he needed to do to kill, mm-hmm. kill old buddy in prison. Um, and so, like I said, like you said, Drew was trying to basically be his own man, do his thing, climb the ranks, and mm-hmm. all this other stuff. And so he's like working with Carter, right? So, uh. We got all that, blah, 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 blah. Uh, no, Noma is trying to get her citizenship. She's trying to buy this prop. She's trying to buy property, do all this other stuff, business stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, stuff, basically a way to clean her money. That's basically what she's mm-hmm. trying to do. Um, but how she needs to become a citizen. Kane is like, uh, well, let's also mention that Noma is sleeping with Kane, uh, Kane and Davis. Um, mm-hmm. But Noma is like, uh, Kane proposes that how about we get married and that way you can become a citizen and do what you need to do. 
and that's important to say because that is actually the last two episodes of yep, it's the wedding. Mm-hmm. It's the wedding of the last episodes of Power Ghost. So we end up on the on the penultimate episode. It is Kane and Noma's wedding. Um, also, they basically uh, Monet and Tariq work together. They're trying to take out Carter and Noma. They're trying to kill both of them. But then Noma and Carter wise up, and they're like, you know what? They're trying to take us out. We need and to come together. Enemy is my friend. Right. So they need. They come together. Um, to basically get rid of them. Um, and so everybody's in on this plan uh, as far as like Tariq and Monet's plan, except Kane. They did not tell Kane the plan, which I think was a big mistake. They should have told him what was up so that way everybody could be on the same page and make sure everything happened like it needed to happen and be cohesive. Do um, you think if they told Kane, he would have been okay with it? I think. I think if they would have explained it, I think yes, because the way he was doing this whole monologue about how he loved his mama held, holds him down at, on the before she got killed, I think yeah. I think Kane would have now if you would have asked me that and Kane did not give that monologue, then the answer would be mm-hmm. no. But mm-hmm. I feel like because he gave this whole speech about how he I'm never gonna turn on my mama. I'm never gonna Which I mean we show we saw that throughout the like he is a ride or die for his mama. Like he got when he found out that uh, Drew and Diana had tried to have her killed. He was, uh-huh. like, I'm gonna kill take them out. Yeah, <laughs> like it's like I'm gonna take them out. You can't kill my mama. I'm gonna kill you. I, I really, I really thought Kane was gonna kill Drew. The episode mm-hmm. when he was like, it was going back and forth. I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, Drew about to die. Yeah, yep. But I think that I do think that if they told him, he would have, he would have been, he would have not. It would have been, they would have had to make it a way where he would have believed it, mm. and been in on it because it's like I think he does you saw that he was actually I think that he really was in love with Effie like I really feel like he actually had true feelings for Effie I agree and and so he did see Noma as a means to power and so he's like I'm gonna use this but he also was attracted to her you know so he's like hey like this is you know she's she's kind of like who like she's the queen and I want to be connected. So I think there was that um there were some feelings there. And so he had to manipulate the situation to make sure he was connected to her. So I don't think at the end of the day he didn't want to be with her. So like they could have made it where hey like we going to take her out because she trying to kill your mama. You know, she literally tried to kill her. So like we going to take her out so we going to use the wedding as a, as a way to do it. And so I think that he would have been in on it once if they did it like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, but if it was Tariq's idea, mm-mm. no, he was not going to be with it. Because <laughs> that's he never a good point. Did. He, he there hates, was never a moment he Tariq. That he liked Tariq. Like he yes. doesn't like he he deals with Tariq, but he hates him. <laughs> yeah. So, and that because never he, changed because he doesn't like the way that basically Monet welcomed him into the the family it was so quick too it didn't make yeah. sense that first season i was like why are you trusting Tariq so quick i was with kane like why are you trusting him so quick just because mm. of st patrick name like whatever anyway yeah um so we're at the wedding and basically normal tells kane you have to pick a side is it gonna be me or your mama and he's like i'm gonna stay with my, I'm, I'm 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 gonna pick my mama i'm always gonna pick my mama i'm never mm-hmm. gonna portray my mama I'm down. yeah so um basically now, go ahead to note that he is tied up in a chair and she has him at gunpoint. So like <laughs> just to point that out. Yes. <laughs> it's like it's not like they're saying their vows. You pick me or your mom. No, she has him at gunpoint with a room full of people tied up. It's gonna be me or your mama. And he's with gunpoint in his face, say, I'm not gonna betray my mama. <laughs> so like that's real. <laughs> so then they Monet and Drew and um and Diana. Uh, and Diana, they go in. They got the guns. They shoot. Da, da, da. Three um, against fifty. Right. And so <laughs> Monet, Monet, Monet hears. And this is the heartbreaking part of the series. Monet overhears what Kane says. How much you know he hold, gonna hold her down? All this other stuff. So she sacrifices herself to save now, her son. That scene was a video game. Like she ran in there. <laughs> With her little gun and just snipered each person as she walked up them steps. Like, boom, 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 slow motion. And then she goes in and, and 
just starts blazing and then gets shot up. <laughs> so it's like it was very 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 sad um because her body lays right in front of Kane as he's laying down tied up and she's bleeding and then Drew and, and Diana come in and they're screaming wake up mama wake up mama that scene was heartbreaking as she much and I and I will say that's the best that Mary J. Blige has acted in her entire Stop series. It. No, <laughs> her death. I'm it serious. Was powerful. It, it was, was good. Powerful. It was a good scene because I mean, she said, "What was her last line?" She was saying, "My babies." Yeah, that yes. definitely. I felt it. Like I did feel it. I felt and it. I, I felt I that. Was like, oh man, and you can see, you can see. This is where I was like, at that point, I said. They could make a Tahada show or a movie, you know, because like that right there was all three of them are now, you know, they already were unplugged, but now they both both their parents, their cousin, they are cousin brother, cousin brother, right, right, right. <laughs> so now they're like, and there's a there even with that scene of them together, I feel like that is their tension between each other has like you know is done and so like the beef has been you know squashed between each other as siblings so now that if they work together and it's the way they think they can they can be on top so I, I had yes I has I have said from the introduction of the Tejada family. I wanted to see more of them. And mm-hmm. then as we got closer, I mean, before they made the announcement of this going to be last season, I was like, the Tejadas, I could see them getting a spinoff. Mm-hmm. And like you said, on at that moment, because again, we got the big power an- spinoff announcements at the end of Power. I said, at the end of book two, there's going to be an announcement that this, there's going to be a Tejada spinoff. There has to be. The way that all, how did all this laid out, there has to be a Tejada spinoff. We cannot be done with Kane, Diana, and Drew. There's no way. I said, we got to we gotta have a, a spinoff. Um, but before we get into the disappointment, that was not... <laughs> that's that, because I was very disappointed that... I was yeah. going to say it. Very disappointed mm-hmm. that that announcement was not made. I was like, where's mm-hmm. the announcement? And mm-hmm. there was none. I was mm-hmm. like... Where is it? Um, also, the very last episode basically is a hunt to kill Noma. Also, got to keep in mind, Carter, uh, in the, in the, at the end, um, they basically, Carter is, Tariq was supposed to kill Carter, but he was talking too much. And then Carter got, stand. that was so stupid. Um, and so then basically Carter and Tariq in the car, Braden and Effie stop it with the, uh, Braden, basically hits him with the car and they get in an accident da, da, da. so they have Carter tied up and they're going to kill him but they're like no we can't kill a cop we need to go and erase the video we need to erase the video that shows us killing the other dude so they got they got that's the basically the, basically that's the side again Tariq is the yeah, side the story yeah, Tariq is the side it's about the Tejadas so mm-hmm. they're trying to get Noma Noma's trying to get Anya to safety right. um so they can get out of there. Noma goes crazy. Her Noma definitely calm her down. Yes, all that, all that stuff. The things are the things, and then basically Anya basically finally figures out that her mom is a drug dealer and a liar and a murderer. And hates her and hates her. Um, they end up getting Anya. The crew ends up taking Anya. Um, they have they was com- actually pretty good the mm-hmm. way they did that. So Tariq has a plan. Mm-hmm. Um. So Tariq pretends, so they, they're trying to find Noma. The whole point is that we need to find Noma, but Anya knows where Noma is. She's at, she basically says there's a place that we go that I'm supposed to go, you know, if something happens. Mm-hmm. So she ends up telling Tariq. So they take, so they go to the place. Anya gets out the car and then she goes to her mom and uh, next thing we know is the and mm-hmm. We see Diana is the one that shot and killed Poe Anya. Poe innocent Anya. And it was like, why you did that? You supposed to shoot normal? She was like, nah, I need her to know how she I know feel. know how I feel. Like, right. I'm like, oh my goodness. This little girl is ruthless. She has broke. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, right. She is she ain't got no more soul. Like she is gone. Like yeah, like maybe her mom was her last piece, but like she ain't got it. Like is she ruthless? Yes, definitely. And so again, the team is split up because we gotta get rid of Carter, we gotta get rid of Noma. Um basically, um and Drew is essential in this because she right. he, he he helps uh he basically uh erases the footage off mm-hmm. the computer because he has access to Carter. He erases the footage. Also, um basically long story short, they get they get Carter alone and, and they basically he was like, We need you to kill he I think he told Drew that he needs him to kill yeah, he told Drew he needs to kill Tariq. But the tables are turned. And basically, they get Carter to confess killing Kamal, and but well, they know they found out well, that they, they 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 found it out. They figured it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they told Carter, and you know Carter admitted doing all this other stuff. And his partner heard all that. Well, the and, specific turning point was when the partner was like, when he was like, "All right, now if you just kill your partner, or put, we could put it all on your partner." You know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Then we'll get you out of here and work together. He's like, "All right." And then the partner comes out. It's like, right. oh my goodness. He's like, "Yeah, he he is not. He is a snake." And I was like, "Okay, you can't trust nobody." So like the fact that you killed this other cop because he was a dirty cop too. The partner was a bur- dirty cop too. So it's like they all dirty. But yeah, I was I was very. But I will tell you, Jason, I was just satisfied with that for two reasons. I was just satisfied with that because one, I wanted Carter to be gone. I need the Carter yeah. to be gone. I want. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't care about prison. I want him to be gone. Well, they were two, saying prison for cops is bad. It's worse than death. That's true, but we're not gonna. But we're not gonna see it. No, we're not. So mm-hmm. I. I don't. I feel like to he didn't me, have his due justice. He, he didn't. So to be Carter, it would have so, made sense to yeah. have Tariq kill him, um, because he is a cop killer. He's killed cops before, and so he can do that. Um, or you know somebody else, but it's like, or honestly, I thought Rashad. I thought, that's what I thought. I was yes. like, because I mean, they could have eat like as soon as all they had to do, because that's like I got an idea. I thought they were going to just show Rashad Tate. Hey, look who killed your brother, right? <laughs> and Rashad Tate was going to be like, all right, give me the gun. And I will take care of it myself. <laughs> right. That's I mean, that, and that, and now that, and that's the second reason why I, would, I was dissatisfied with it because yeah. I was like Rashad Tate should have been there that, to mm-hmm. to hear this whole thing to know because yeah. because yeah. right now because Rashad thinks the Russians killed his brother right which is like no nah, like mm-mm. So, so that would have that was a that was a because they had to rush it. You know, maybe Lorenz Tate wasn't around for the last, you know, couple of days or whatever. Because I feel like they could have made that work. That's yes. not that hard to do, and that would have made that would have put a bow on that side plot. In his absolutely, because in my mind, Carter is still alive in prison, and he's probably running the joint. That's what my that's what's happening yeah. in my mind. And, that and would I give don't him I... do justice for murdering the the only good cop in the thing. It's like right. we need some we need some kind of justice. For that, so anyway, right? Yeah, I don't, happen. I don't want happiness for Carter. He needs to, yeah, nah. <laughs> no. Um, and so then on the flip side with Noma, so basically they, uh, they go to the oh, so Kane has access to Noma's flight plan, and so they make it seem like, um, they booked the plane. Oh yeah, and funny. then um, so Diana and Drew and Kane are waiting for Noma to show up. All these police cars come, and Kane's like, "Don't do nothing stupid. Just give, you know, let the cops listen to the cops." All this other stuff. So Kane runs runs off. Diana and Drew get taken in by the get arrested by the cops, and so they take they go away. And Norma smiling like, "Oh, I won, I won!" And then Kane pops up and basically shoots her point blank in the forehead, Mm -hmm. and Norma is unalive. (laughs) <laughs> and so and Kane oh, yeah. but but Kane gets shot at now at that moment I thought Kane was about to be gone I said no don't kill Kane cause mm-hmm. the police start shooting at Kane he does get hit um but then they try to find him and then he's not there he's gone yeah 
Mm-hmm. So come to find out he's with Effie. He's bandaged up. He's a, he has to, he's on the run because his, his face is plastered everywhere. Mm-hmm. Effie, another side story, was about to go to en- be an engineer, robotic school, do all that mm-hmm. other stuff. She has all this That's money that she saved mm-hmm. up. She gives the money that she saved up because she gave it to Kane so that he can go live and survive. Oh, and I thought that was the dumbest thing. No, that was so stupid. That was the dumbest thing ever. Mm-hmm. Effie, why did, that made me so angry because Effie has been wanting to get out of the drug game. Yep. And she yeah. has an opportunity to do that because the only reason why she was still in it because Noma was like, no. Nah. Right. And now Noma's dead so she can go. And Kane right. was like, go do your thing. No, here. And you need to be safe. She's like, I, I, I can always make more money. Girl. Hold Kane, on, know, p- Kane know the streets. Like, let him figure that out. That pissed me off so bad. <laughs> he was going to survive. Pissed- that pissed me off so bad, but yeah. So basically, she, and then he gives her a forehead kiss and goes off. Yeah. No, I love you. No, no, thank you. No, nothing. Just a, just a teary. He gave her a whole life savings so she can get out the drug game, so that you can just temporarily flee. Oh gosh. So yeah, there's that. So basically, uh, Davis McClain. We didn't mention this, but Davis McClain in season four, he did lose his license, his uh, law license. Um, it, they were suspended. Um, and at the end, Davis gets because basically he basically like got every he pretty much got everybody off. He did his thing. Yeah, he did his thing. Um, everybody out. Everybody's out, and um, he basically pinned everything on Noma. He said Noma is the queen pin that you want because again, and she, it, because <laughs> again, these these women, these ta- this task force, they have a they have this thing that they really want to bring down St. Patrick mm-hmm. <laughs> so bad. Um. But he was like, no, it's Noma. And so if he said, because they, because again, the way they got played made them look very bad. So their reputation mm-hmm. is like mud. And mm-hmm. Davis was like, yo, if y'all want to come back on top, you need to go ahead and take this win. I'm giving it to you on a platter. Right. Take it. It is. And let's move on. Mm-hmm. So Davis gets his license. He, he gets his license reinstated. Um, Braden, so Braden and Effie are now working for so Tariq. Oh, also we gotta mention so Tariq has a meeting with Noma's brother, mm-hmm. and he's like basically, I'm That's we want the last line in the last yeah. line in the, of the ep- of series. Yeah, so he's like, I basically want to run. I want to you. I want you to let me bring your drugs through New York. He basically has everything set up. He has, he has a he he's working now with Carter's partner. So he got the police on deck. He got Davis. Um. And he has he has the uh the campuses the campuses okay. all that stuff and I think they're gonna I think they they find a new underground that they're gonna run they're gonna mm-hmm. do the clubs again so basically Tariq has everything on lock the whole city get on lock oh he did meet up with his mom and he said yo I got you taken care of but you gonna have to move got to go somewhere else now you can't stay here and I can't be with you I'm gonna stay here in New York and Tasha's like no no but he's like no Ma you gotta trust me I gotta do this I wanna make sure you safe. You and, uh, and and my sister are safe, so Natasha has to go somewhere else now. Mm-hmm. So New York, so basically Tariq is now running New York. The, the last line of the things like, well, where you where are you going to be? I'm gonna be invisible, like a ghost. Like yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what made me think they shot that scene after. They were uh, yeah. the announcement came that they, they were had this to make last season. A wrap up. They had to tie that up real quick. Yeah, because it could have ended with them. It could have ended with the, you know, I think you could have even ended it with, um, Monet dying and not having a conclu- like even like Noma still being alive, and that would have been an interesting way of starting off the next season. Um, because you could have had you know that wrap up, mm-hmm. you know. But 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 that's what again. But that's again that's what makes the. So we can go ahead and talk about our feelings on the series finale. Um, this this definitely gave season finale one thousand percent. Um, which which what which I mean, which is what I hate about sometimes about the network. Sometimes, um, I hate when they. 
I don't know. Man. I don't. I, I don't. Again, I don't know how it works because with me, I'm independent. I am the network. So <laughs> whatever you want to make, your whatever, stuff, you say, right, I'm done. right. So <laughs> make more, you know. Right. So I don't really know how all that really works internally, but I just feel like y'all have. To me, from the outside looking in, I feel like okay. Because I, I, I assume that power is very expensive to make. Especially with these yeah. with these names mm-hmm. that you have on, on the roster. Oh, absolutely. So I would say, I feel like in my head, you'd be like, you know what? I think we want to go ahead and end Power Ghost after season four. Mm-hmm. So let me go ahead and have a meeting with Courtney Kemp and 50 Cent and whoever the showrunner is. And let me say, hey, guys, thank y'all so much. But I think we're going to go ahead and end it on season four. So we let you know now, so that way y'all can go ahead and write the scripts mm-hmm. and go ahead and tie everything up. Because I really yeah. hate, I really hate, I just really hate endings that aren't endings. Like I yeah, just, I mean, so I do feel like it was rushed. I felt like I, I liked that you kind of seeing Tariq be at the kingpin starting because it's like the beginning he's figuring out how to run drugs and by the end he knows the system and he has everybody on his on his payroll and he's kind of like evolving so i like that but i do feel like if you had a little bit more like i feel like one more season or even five more episodes could have made that you know a little bit could have made a difference um and even just because they were i feel like they were just trying to rush it and to, to tie the bell so that they can get to that end point because that's the that end point is a good end point for him to be like i'm running this and even with brayden like you ain't my partner you work for me <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's like you just gotta deal with it because right. and it's like okay like that's kind of how it is it's like you work for me and that's how it's gonna be right so i think that's a good that is what you like following Tariq. Like, I like, like, that's kind of what I thought he would be like, you know? And so it's like, yeah, he's like you said earlier, he wants to be the better ghost. And I think that what he's learned and what he's seen, um, he really can be invisible in a way that works. He'd be a student in school and let the money come to him and do his thing. He's got a lawyer that trusts him and that he trusts. He got, you know, a cop that he don't trust, but he keeps on the payroll and he knows the streets and so and he's got the saint patrick name that gives him respect in certain places and so i think there's like there's a lot that gets him to the place but yeah so but that that they did all that in like three minutes (laughs) (laughs) so it's kind of like okay because that could have been that could have been a like a couple episodes of him showing like hey he's he's settling in and then boom like now i'm the kingpin yeah I think we needed. I, I think we needed two, two more episodes. Two, but I would say mm-hmm. two, two or three more episodes. I think. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If not, if you're not gonna give us a whole season, I like I said, I think we definitely yeah. need at least a couple more episodes just to mm-hmm. kind of. Just because I'm, I'm, I'm all about good pacing. I love good yeah. pacing, but at the same time, it was like again, if it, it felt so rushed and like so mm-hmm. much, it was just like I didn't really feel fulfilled. Um, I was just pissed off to me. I was just pissed off. I stayed up and watched that. I was like, I could have watched this later. Um, <laughs> yeah, because because I didn't want to be I didn't want to be spoiled. I was like, I'd be stayed up, stay up at midnight and watch it. And I was when there I was tell nothing you, really to spoil. I mean, you kind of yeah, nothing. like okay, no one's dead. You know, cars in jail. Yeah, yeah. I um, yeah. I was just like, uh, I really could have went to bed. Um. I, no, yeah. Monet. The biggest surprise was Monet getting yes. killed. Yes, I wasn't like, expecting that. that. Was definitely, um, I My, didn't know that. that was and honestly, the biggest surprise for me for the finale, the series finale, was Anya getting killed. I didn't expect I, I didn't expect yeah. Anya to get killed either. That was a lot. She didn't um, die. I, my, <laughs> uh, my other complaint with the finale was it was too much dialogue. It was mm. too much talking. I was, I wanted more action. I wanted more. It was a, it was a, it was a lot of dialogue, especially in the beginning. It was like, "What y'all? What we doing? Why we talking so much? Why we not? <laughs> why we not shooting? Like, what's going on?" Um, yeah, it was just a lot. It was just a lot of dialogue. Um, I guess it just I get it. It just it just didn't feel 
series finale to me. But again, mm-hmm. again, I'm all, but I'm going in though, knowing or well, assuming that they shot everything before um, they the announcement came down that they were um, this is going to be yeah. the last season. You know, so it but but it just, it just felt incomplete to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I was I was more so upset that they did not make the Tejada announcement. I, I for <laughs> sure that I was going to be right that they was going to make the announcement that they was going to do a Tejada spinoff because I feel like I just ah, I just feel like we need more of the kids. We need mm-hmm. more of the kids. Mm-hmm. I feel like we need more of it. It was. I feel like those three. Now I will say this. I was talking to one of my friends about this. Now I wouldn't be mad if Kane had his own thing by himself. I wouldn't be mad at that. However, I do not want to see Drew and or Diana by themselves. Yeah, um, I agree with that. If it needs to be Kane or all or three, all three. Mm-hmm. because the way they set it up at the end, because you know Drew went to art school, Kane's on the run, and then they had Diana standing at the end like she was about to be the new Monet, like she about to be mm-hmm. Monet Junior. Um, but yeah, I, I, that's what, that's what I need. I definitely need more Tejadas for sure. Um, yeah. so we saw the mid seasons credit, the mid, the mid credit scene. Um, so Tariq, Tariq is walking. He gets a phone call. Uh, he basically say hello, blah, 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 what you need. I'm, you know, I'm on my way. You know, you always going to be family that hangs up. So I think the obvious prediction is that that was Tommy on the phone, mm-hmm. and then he's going Tariq is going to be on the final season of Force. Oh yeah, because yeah. Force is wrapping up. Force season three will be the final season of Force, so I think Tariq is going to go to Chicago and help Tommy with whatever yeah. it is that he needs yeah. help with. Mm-hmm. Now, um, now some people are saying that Tariq and Tommy are going to get their own show. I don't Which know. I don't want. I, I don't say I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't want another. I don't, I don't need another Tariq spinoff, and I don't need. Yeah. I definitely don't need another another Tommy spinoff. I don't I'm think good. I want that. Yeah, I don't think I want that. Um, so yeah, I would love a Tahada spinoff, or um, and I don't think they. I think they since they wrapped up this one, I don't want to see more. I mean, I wouldn't mind watching this. Well, if he's on that start third season, I wouldn't mind watching it to see what's happening, but. Yeah, I don't. I got somebody. Yeah, they, they they keep everybody keeps saying, "Oh, we about to get another. We're gonna get another Tariq." No, we don't need another Tariq spinoff. We're, <laughs> I think we're good. I think we've we've had ten years of Tariq. We have, yeah. yeah. So I think we're them. I think we're good on that. I mean, uh, shout out to Michael Rainey Jr. Though I mean, definitely want to keep see the brother working for sure. Um, oh yeah, but we don't we don't need another Tariq spinoff. Um, mm. I think I think I do think uh, I was talking to uh, one of my friends. I do think if Tariq ends up on Force, it's gonna boost Force because Force is honestly and the Force is the weakest one out of all of them. Probably watch it because I haven't watched Force, so I'll be one of those people that's like, "Oh, let me follow Tariq over here." So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, so that's so that is Power uh, Book Two Ghost the full guys series. Yeah. Yeah. Um so Jason and them, Jason, Josh, and Marcus, they like to do this thing where they rate things, rate the oh, shows yeah. and the movies. <laughs> um and I wanna I wanna I wanna spe- do a special special thing over here. I wanna do it over here. All right, all right. So Ooh. I want Jason, Jason, if you could please explain what you guys' rating system is on what you yes. were talking about this time. So yeah, please explain yeah, it to yeah. me. Yeah, so um, we have four levels of five-ish. Um, so the bottom is trash, where it's like, you know what? It's done. That show should not have happened. <laughs> you know, <it's> garbage, <laughs> you know? <laughs> then there is a do-over, where you're like, hey, it was good or bad. Maybe if it was done with a different actor or different writer different script just do it again but there's a these are the things we want you to do better um the other level three is like um replay it's like man 
whether you like to watch it to make fun of or watch it again as is don't change nothing i just watch it again it's good you know that's good decent replay then the the level four is like sequel like i love this so much i want to see more of this keep it going don't stop and then the final level the highest of all high is neck bleed where it's like so exciting this is show or movie is so amazing that the jugular in your neck explodes (laughs) (laughs) so um those are the ratings so before we give our ratings um uh, my my friend Quad, uh, who was a guest on Carlson's World, he made a prediction um, that Ghost was going to show up on the, at the end of the series. And I told him, Quad, no, it's, no, he's not. Dude, he's that's not going to happen. This is not a soap opera. And that <laughs> way, he he was insistent. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you, I was so relieved that he was wrong. That's funny <laughs> that because. It did not happen. I because I literally was I was watching it. That's another reason I wanted to go ahead and watch it. Too. I was like, "Quad better not be right. I I better not see James go say Patrick show up at the end of this series." And I was like, "Thank God he did not." And I actually put a post. I said, uh, <laughs> "I said, Quad, you all right there?" Because you know, oh, I mean, goodness, he didn't show I did, up. He did show up. You all right? But he he's insistent that Ghost is still alive. That Ghost is going to show up somewhere. Okay. Um. So. Yeah, there's that. All right. <laughs> Did not happen. So, Jason, um, we're going to do this. This is a two part question. Well, two part rating. I want you to rate the series finale itself. Okay. And then I want you to rate the entire the series. series. Yes. I mean, okay. The series finale, I mean, we kind of talked about it, but for, for me, the series finale is a do over. I think that it could have. There's so many things that could have been done better. I think it was it was rushed. I didn't mind it. Like it wasn't trash, but you know, I think that like we mentioned, like adding a few more episodes would have helped us to wrap it up a little bit better, cleaner. You know, I mentioned the you know idea of having him end um, his uh, series with a you know graduation to kind of show the full spectrum of. Um, Tariq's you know journey I would have liked that so I would say uh, do over and then for the entire series um, I I definitely was looking forward to this show um, I watched it immediately as soon as, it, as soon as I knew it was coming out like I was like I was on it every single week when I was in town I'm like making sure I watch it and so um, yeah I would rate it in a, and I guess because I loved power Power, oops, okay. Power was <laughs> a, uh, power was a sequel level show, and I think that this is a, for me, that same level. Um, I don't want to do more, so it's like I want them to wrap it up. So I'm not saying to do a sequel, but um, that's the level that I'm rating it. Okay, okay, nice. Um. The series finale for me, uh, definitely, definitely a do over, one thousand percent. Um, and I say that with with them having the knowledge that this is going to be the last season. Mm-hmm. So I want them to, I want them to know beforehand. Okay, guys, this is going to be it. So let's go ahead and really wrap it up and really make things a little bit more cohesive because honestly bro with the last season man i feel like there was certain episodes it was a couple episodes i was like we don't need this episode i was like y'all only got y'all got 10 episodes make all 10 counts yeah um yeah but again i feel like um again that's why i was like yeah they 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 definitely shot this before they they knew that this was gonna be the last season so i would definitely say the series for now is a do-over the series itself um as we mentioned, um, me and you both agree. Well, you haven't seen the other books, but book two to me is the best book out of all three of the uh, uh, books. Not the mm-hmm. not the original power, but the uh the spinoffs. Um I loved um I loved uh this book. It was my favorite. Um however, this last season it's gonna bring my rating down because I would have mm-hmm. said sequel level, 
not sequel do another uh, mm-hmm. spinoff, but I would have said sequel level. But this last season to me, it wasn't it was it wasn't the best. So I'm gonna have to say uh, replay for um, book two because it, overall, because overall the series is still a good series. Um, I'm actually mm-hmm. thinking about Jason actually going back and watching the original Power. Um, and with yeah. that being said, I'm going to probably rewatch book two as well. Yeah, um, that makes sense. It's so be good to see Tariq's development in that show. Yes, like, knowing where yes, he ends. Yes, like he's just a little little son that's in the background at first, but he actually has a very interesting story arc um, throughout that series. So, yeah. And I want, and I definitely want to rewatch the the beginning of this season. I mean, I don't remember a lot of things that happened. I know the main stuff that happened in the original Power, so I definitely want to rewatch yeah. it. But even even with Book Two, there's some stuff I don't remember. So I'm like, I want to go back to the beginning. And and, and to your point with Tariq's, his evolution from the beginning Power, the original Power to the end of Book Two is astounding. But his the his development in the beginning of Book Two to the end yeah. of book two is still mm-hmm. should be steady oh, yeah. because you can yep. definitely see the evolution of of Tariq and Patrick mm-hmm. for sure. Um so yeah so those are my those are my ratings um for that. Um what are your thoughts because there are there were two more spinoffs announced um Power Origins which is supposed to be really? about about yeah it's supposed to be about young Tommy and young Ghost. Oh, okay. Um, and then what was the second one? Uh, hold on, let me look. Do you do you do you want to see the origin of Tommy and Ghost? I mean, I didn't know I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm not sure if I will. I guess it depends on if it gets my attention. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, it's kind of like I'm. I will give it a chance, and if it doesn't get my attention, I probably won't. Cause I do like I do want to watch shows like this. I do enjoy it, and so if it does give me what I want in a show, which is, you know, some drama, some suspense, some intrigue, some, you know, some, I like, cause I like what I like about power is the chess dynamic mm-hmm. pieces ahead and moving around. Like it makes you think. And so I think that's where, um, I don't want just the random shoot them up type show. I want something a little bit more dynamic. So, if if it's like that, because I'm assuming Kanan would be in it. See, that's so this is this is where um, maybe he'd be in jail. I don't know. This is where I'm confused because so we have raising Kanan is the um obviously it's the prequel to Power and it's right. showing how Kanan became who he is. So I right. thought originally I thought we was gonna see Tommy and Ghost in that because right. Kanan basically Which makes was, sense. They grew up together, right? Um, but we're so it's the, but we're getting the origins of Tommy and Ghost. So I'm trying to figure out how they're going to are they gonna collide them some type of way or I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna how that's gonna work. Yeah, I don't know. Um I'll give it a chance, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so I misspoke. I I guess it was only one. I thought they'd make two announcements. Um but as it but says you already pop- said the one that canceled the uh the what's the name was canceled anyway before it aired before it yeah aired, yeah yeah it probably yeah um I'm looking on I mean Wikipedia is not really a reliable source uh <laughs> <laughs> yes you're 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 a uh, <laughs> not very reliable Wikipedia but but according to this it's saying Power London and Power LA that's just what? random things that people wrote. That's what it looked like, bro. <laughs> um, okay. I don't know if I want. Uh, okay, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah. Overall, um, this is definitely. I I appreciate. I appreciate that we have these shows that we can discuss that gets everybody talking. Um, 
on the interwebs and podcasts, mm-hmm. different things like that. Um, so I definitely appreciate these these types of shows uh, for sure. And I think and and like I said again, it's it's always great to have these dialogues to have these conversations. I think it's I think it's dope for sure. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that you want to add um, about power? Not that I think of. I think I said um, what I liked about it. Cool. Um, I'm trying to think. Was there anything else? I don't think there's anything else. Um, I have these things. I don't. I mean, I don't. I'm not. I should do more like Josh and actually take notes and have them <laughs> have them ready before yeah, we do the podcast. Yeah. But uh, I don't. We and I just talk, we just talked. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, had notes. I would have had more, but I I did look over some just a couple of, a couple of recaps just to kind of refresh my memory. But um, yeah, I think what I said earlier, and you know, I like it. I want to watch. I'll probably in, uh, indulge in some more uh, older shows and stuff like that to kind of get my fix. Yeah, I think I said I think I covered everything. Like I said again, I, I say that I had said that to say because a lot of sometimes when I record these pods after we finish and I'm like editing, I was like, come up with some. That's what it was. That's what that's that. that's yeah, that's, that's, what that. that's, that's what I want. That's what I that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> um, you know, I think I think we All I right. think we I think we got everything though. Um, Jason, man, thank you so much. I definitely appreciate you. Um, get if the people want to follow you, they want to know more information about you. How can they get that? Yeah, so smiley Jason underscore on Instagram is a good way to to follow me. My website is smileyjason.com. You can check me out, see what I'm up to. Nice. That's what I was gonna say. Um <laughs> I would not be mad if I would have not have been mad if Davis McClain would have had his own spinoff. And I said that yeah, it, show. I think I would have been cool to see him in the law world because we already right. know Mc, we already know McLean mm-hmm. is going to do whatever it takes he's mm-hmm. and, and so we definitely could see again power mm-hmm. and how all that plays out in law in the courtroom yeah, all that like stuff I think, type stuff like you see that kind of like you know because he's yeah that's, that would be I would I would watch that and I think Method Man could hold the show oh yeah um, oh yeah one thousand percent. One thousand percent. I'm glad that came to me while you were power law. <laughs> give my man Jason his creator credit. Give him his <laughs> give him his executive producer credit right now. Oh goodness. Courtney Yo, Kemp and fifty cent. Give it to him. <laughs> but no nah, man. Yeah. yeah. If you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> But no, nah, um, Jason, thank you so much. I definitely appreciate you uh, for taking the time out to honor, chat yeah. with me. Definitely mm-hmm. appreciate it. All right, y'all. It's, uh, that's it. We're going to wrap it up. Thank y'all again for listening and watching. And this has been Carlton's World. Y'all be blessed.